Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network here on the Mount St. Joseph Athletics YouTube page for today's Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference doubleheader. First up, the women's game will tip off at 1 o'clock. And next, after that, 25 minutes later, the men's game will tip off. Today, the Earlham Quakers come in. Earlham's women's team has an overall record of 3-7, and 1-4 and four in the conference. The Lions are 3-1 and one in the conference and 10-2 and two overall, so we're in for a good basketball game today. Coach Maisie Elston of the Lions, former interim head coach at Earlham College. We were lucky to spend a couple of minutes pregame with Coach Elston. Here are our comments. And Chloe were playing nearly 40 minutes a game, and, and this year they can play, you know, 20 to 25 and be way more efficient because we've just got so many more weapons that we can bring in. Yeah, I mean, you, I look at the stats from the other night's game. I mean, Chloe only played nine, or 21 minutes. Carly only played 19. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's big. You you can keep those kids fresh for the late season run. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think um, it allows us to be more, a little more aggressive too, because we are very aggressive as a team. Uh, we get in parts of lanes. We use our athleticism, and and that does often cause um, you know a few more foul calls. Uh, and we're able to play a little more aggressively now. The other night we did get in foul trouble early. Uh, Mills had three and, and Chloe had two early, so she didn't play the first half really at all. Um, but last year that would have killed us. And this year, um, I mean, we just, as, as sometimes it's a bad thing, but you say like next man up, like who, who can uh, step in and perform now. Talk a little bit about, you know, the other night's game against Bluffton. For a while it looked like you guys were on a cruise to another conference win. Bluffton had that big fourth quarter to get back into it. What did you see going back?
I'm not positive if we heard that lead in up to it earlier. Again, my name is Blake Watson, Sports Information Director here at Mount St. Joseph. I'm going to take the time real quick to give you the starting lineups for today's contest. For Earlham, 5'5 uh, junior guard from Richmond, Indiana, Willow Runyon. Uh, a 5'4 junior guard from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 11, Jay Bright. A 5'7 freshman forward from Goshen, Ohio, Brooke Noland. A 5'8 freshman forward from Clayton, Indiana, Abby Parsons. And a 5'10 junior from Jefferson, Indiana, Bailey Gibson. And for the Lions, a 5'10 sophomore from Erlanger, Kentucky, Morgan Jenkins will start at one of the guard spots. At the point guard position will be number one, a 5'3 sophomore from Fairfield, Ohio, Carly Mills. Um, at one of the other guard positions, a 5'7 graduate student from Ford Thomas, Kentucky, Chloe Jansen, who wears number 24. At the other wing position, it'll be a 5'9 senior from Warsaw, Kentucky, Ellie Oldendick, who wears number 32. And in the middle will be a 6-foot senior from Hebron, Kentucky, Connor High School, Madison Drummonds, who wears number 31. Lions again coming into this ball game off the heels of a hard-fought three-point conference win on the road at Bluffton Wednesday night. Um, look to keep that momentum going and stay amongst those top teams in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. A win today would go a long way as they are entering the difficult portion of their conference schedule over the next couple weeks. Um, we will step away real quickly and observe the national anthem, and we'll be right back with the action. All right, we are back here with uh, the action for today's contest. First, Russ Breedy, our PA announcer, will introduce the Earlham Quakers. Once again, for Earlham, it is zero, Willow Runyon, 11, Jay Bright, 15, Brooke Nolan, 21, Abby Parsons, and 23, Bailey Gibson, who will start the game. Bright is their leading scorer, averaging 12.2 a game thus far this season in conference games Parsons has been their leading scorer with 12.4 and for the Lions the starting lineup will be uh, number zero Morgan Jenkins number one Carly Mills number 24 Chloe Jansen number 31 Madison Drummonds and number 32 Ellie Oldendick the Lions will be missing leading scorer Whitney Warfel today who averages 11.3 points per game and without uh, Anaya Murphy. Lions go in this game just a touch shorthanded. Their leading scorer that is playing in today's game is Morgan Jenkins, who averages 10.9 a game. And in conference games alone, and there are four conference contests, Carly Mills leads them in scoring with 12.4. We are on milestone watch today as well. Chloe Jansen, the fifth year senior, enters this game just 11 points shy of the Magical 1,000 point mark for her career. So really excited to see if Chloe can get that today before the Lions head back out on the road. It'd be nice to get in front of her friends and family who are in attendance today. All right, so we're ready to get underway. 
it will be Drummonds and Gibson to jump it at center court. And we are underway as Earlham controls the tip. This is right. Right has it, gets it over to Gibson. Gibson to Runyon. Line switching everything at the top of the key. Jenkins guarding Gibson. Gibson tries the entry pass, taken away by Jenkins. Jenkins tries to get it to Jansen on the back cut, loses the handle. This is Mills resetting the offense. Jansen, skip past the Mills who takes the deep three. Bang! Carly Mills gets the Lions on the board with the deep three. Runyon bringing it up as Jen Jenkins guards. Zero versus zero here. Lions switch again. This is Gibson being guarded by Jansen. A little bit of a touch, ticky tack foul. 35 feet from the hoop. Coach Elson's not going to be happy with that call or that play from Chloe. So inbounding near side is Gibson for Earlham. Gets it into Runyon. Yeah. Hand off around the top of key. Gibson tries another tough entry pass, and Chloe's going to get caught with her second quick foul. Checks into the game, the six-foot freshman from Indianapolis, as Jansen has to take a seat. Not good for Chloe on pick up two fouls in the first minute of the ball game. Gibson being guarded by Drummonds. Drummonds tries to poke it away. We're gonna get a five-second violation on Gibson, who couldn't find anybody else. That'll be the turn, first turnover, second turnover of the game on Gibson, actually. Mills brings it across, off to Olden Dick. Looking for Gingrich in the post. Works it back around to Jenkins. Mills in the corner. Pass knocked away by Wright. Bright, my apologies. Mills gets it into Olden Dick, right back to Mills. Jenkins thinks about a three, back to Mills. She'll step in, pull it, misses. Gingrich just into the ball game with the offensive rebound, lays it up, misses. Drummond's with the offensive rebound, lays it up, misses, but is fouled and will go to the line to shoot a pair. Drummond makes the first. Misses the second. Gibson down with the board for Erlen. Bright pushes the pace. Hands off to Gibson. Back to Bright in the corner. Bright dribbles back to the top. Gets it off to Runyon. Runyon back to Gibson. This will be a three from Bright. Bangs it in. Nice offense there from Erlen. Quick passing. Get to an open three. Mills. As Erlen is now in a little bit of a zone. Nice pass from Ellie Olden Dick to a wide open Gingrich underneath the hoop. Bright is bumped by Mills in the middle of the floor. It's probably a little more contact than either of Chloe's fouls that were called. Gibson. Dribble handoff with Runyon. Runyon, nice left to right crossover, spins into the lane, and we're going to get a travel. That'll be the third turnover already on Erlen. Mills brings it across. Gets it off to Jenkins. He gets it to Olden Dick straight away, three. Misses short. Madison comes down with the board. Kicks it back out to Mills. Lions wisely going to reset the offense. Jenkins pulls her three, misses it long. A hustle rebound on the floor. We're going to get a jump ball. Nice effort there by Haley Gingrich. 
We'll have our first sub of the ball game from Earlham is number 42, Berkeley Shelton, 5'10 freshman from Anderson, Indiana, will check in. And Nolan will take a seat. Earlham in a little bit of a zone. You heard in the pregame comments from Coach Elston that she expected Earlham to run some zone defense, force them to shoot. Lions have been willing to shoot early. Just got to get them to go. Drummonds to the high post. Free throw line, bangs it in. Bright brings it across, being guarded by Mills. Around a screen from Gibson. Kicks it out to Runyon. Runyon to the middle. It's a three-pointer from Parsons, which rims out. Rebounded by Ellie Oldendick of the Lions. Mills looking for Drummonds, but passes it back to Oldendick, who bangs in another three. We'll have our first timeout of the ball game as Arlen calls a timeout with 6.23 here in the first. Lions lead 11-3. We are back here again, 6.23 to play in the first. Lions with the 11 to three early lead. Four players have scored already for Mount St. Joseph. This is Runyon. Picked up by Jenkins. Around the screen from Shelton. Ingrich does a good job after the Lions have to switch that turnover there. Drummonds comes away with the steal, going to try to go coast to coast, rolls into the paint, misses it, unable to come down with the board. Gibson gets it for Earlham. They're racing the other way. Earlham looks to try to run. Olden Dick does a good job of jumping that by Runyon. Oh, skip pass to Bright, just missed the takeaway to Mills. Olden Dick will get a block there on Bright as she was driving to the hoop. Olden Dick did a great job of holding her spot and staying straight up and down. We have another sub for Earlham as freshman guard from Muncie, Indiana. Amari Wright checks in. Wright goes 5-2. Mills off to Olden Dick. Around the top of the key go the Lions. Jenkins kicks to Mills. Mills misses long. Wright just checked into the game with the board. Mills almost gets a steal on the open floor. Wright does a good job of keeping it. Nice little right to left crossover from right, getting them into their offense. Into the paint, this is Shelton working against Gingrich, and that is blocked by Haley Gingrich. It'll stay here with Earlham, which is 14 seconds on the shot clock. Lions have been able to put up 10 shots already in the game. Earlham has only attempted two. Earlham almost turns it over on the inbound pass. This is Shelton. Looking for Wright to reset the offense. Only nine on the clock. Wright, 35 feet from the hoop, around the screen. Into the mid-range, pulls it. Nice shot there by Amari Wright to get Irwin back on the scoreboard. Lines quickly the other way. Jenkins to Mills. Olden Dick straight away thought about another attempt at a three. Nice pass. Oh, we have a three-second violation on Haley Gingrich. Lions have a pair of subs here as Ella Stivers and Amanda Lovejoy check in for the first time. 
Drummonds and Oldendick will take a seat for Coach Elston. This is right, being guarded by Mills. Find switch it at the top. Parsons off to Runyon. Runyon being guarded by Lovejoy. This is Gibson left elbow. This is Runyon, corner three, bangs it in. Nice shot there, good offense again from Earl. Gibson did a good job with the penetrating dribble, drew a defender, and hits Runyon for the wide open corner three. Jenkins looks inside, looking for Stivers or Gingrich. This is Mills, gets it to Stivers in the high post, turns, shoots it. It's a really good shot by Ella. Ella caught that and shot it. She was shot ready when she caught it, which was huge. Right comes across. Takes it all the way to the paint with left-handed dribble. This is Parsons drills the three. Earlham starting to get a little hot here from deep. Jenkins gets it in to Gingrich. He kicks it out to Lovejoy. I apologize, that's Stivers. The second three, second call on Gingrich. Annabelle Williams and Madison Drummonds checks back in. Mills and Gingrich will take a seat. Just the first turnover of the ball game by the Lions. Or second, my apologies. Second three, second violation. Runyon working on Drummonds. This is Parsons from the right corner this time. Bangs it in again. Earlham now has a lead, 14-13. Earlham. Four of five from three here early in the game. Lions just two of six. Annabelle Williams to Jenkins. Gets it to Stivers in the high post. Stivers once again shoots that mid-range jumper and drains it. Gets Stivers four. Lovejoy does a good job of getting back and changing the direction of right. Making her stop her dribble. Rejects the screen from Shelton. Goes all the way to the lane with her right hand. Lays it up and in. Jenkins brings it across for the Lions. Back and forth action here early in this game. Drummond's elbow. This is Lovejoy. Back to Drummond's. Jenkins catch, shoot. This is long. Lions had everybody there to rebound it, but Wright comes out with it, and she's going the other way quickly. Tries to go to the rim on Jenkins. Runyon with a stop and pop. Nice rebound there by Stivers. This is Williams. Williams cross court pass to Williams. My apologies, it was Lovejoy to Williams. Two and five. Difficult numbers to decipher from all the way up here. Jenkins to Lovejoy in the corner. There's a kick from Earlham. Checking in for the Lions is Jordan Patterson. And for Earlham, it is Brooke Noland and Jay Bright both back into the ball game. Runyon and Shelton will take a seat for Earlham as I believe it was Lovejoy took a seat for the mount. Patterson to Jenkins. Jenkins gets into that middle, misses it long. Drummonds does a good job of tipping it back to Jenkins. Jenkins tries to go with a no-look pass. And it's taken away by Bright, who gets it off to Wright, who misses the running layup, gets her own rebound. Parsons from straight away. She bangs it in again. That's three threes already for Abby Parsons. Give her nine. Lions got to find her in transition. This is Jenkins between the circles to Stivers in the high post. Stivers goes all the way to the rim with the left hand, misses. Drummond's with the board, goes up, and is fouled. Drummonds will go to the line to shoot a pair with 108 here to play in the first quarter. Mills will check back in as Jenkins takes a seat. Drummonds one of two from the free throw line to start this game. The only two free throws taken so far. Misses the front end. Drummonds, eyes it up, makes the second. Lions back to within three. This is Bright. 
around a screen into the post. Parsons has another three, misses it. Annabelle Williams down with the board. She'll push it the other way for the Lions. Into the corner for Mills, wide open three. Bang! Carly Mills from the corner. Ties this thing back up at 19. Bright around a screen. It's a tough call on Mills, 28 feet from the hoop, trying to avoid a screen. As Sheldon checks back in for Erlen. Olden Dick checks back in for Mills. It's Mills' first foul. Smart to get her out here in hopes that she doesn't pick up a quick, bad second. This is Bright. I apologize, I keep mixing up Wright and Bright. Shot from the corner, missed. Travel in front of everybody, Miss Shelton. Right-handed twisting layup, misses. Olden Dick gets it across. Annabelle looks into Madison. Madison gets it over to Patterson. As Coach Elson's barking out for them to get the last shot. Straight away, mid-range shot from Madison. Doesn't go. When the first half, or first quarter, my apologies. 19-19. We'll be right back with the second quarter of action. All right, we're back. About to start the second quarter of action. In that first quarter, Erlen was 7 of 14, 50% from the field, 5 of 8 from 3, 3 of 5 for Abby Parsons. They had 7 rebounds to the Lions 6. Lions 7 of 17, just 41% from the field, 3 of 8, 37.5% from the three-point line. Big story early in this game is the two fouls on Chloe Jansen, the Lions' fifth-year senior and leader. We'll see how long Coach Elston's willing to leave her over there. A little pick and roll action. This is Runyon from the right elbow. Misses. Give Gingrich the rebound. Mills looks to get it into Drummonds. Lions are able to do so. Drummonds with a good quick pass out. Another three second violation on the Lions. Drummonds. Stumbled a little bit, was unable to get out of the paint. Uh, three turnovers on the Lions, all of which are three-second violations. So this is Bright with the ball in her hand around a screen from Shelton. Runyon thinks about a three. This is Bright being guarded by Drummonds. Shelton thinks about the straightaway three. Parsons around a screen from Shelton. is bright from the right elbow, misses everything. We're going to get a foul on Brooke Nolan on the rebound attempt. She knocked Ellie Olden Dick to the ground. Mills brings it across. Harlan continues to sink that zone. Trying to keep the lines away from the paint. Gingrich misses the layup. Erlen comes the other way. This is Parsons. Nice back cut there. Shelton lays it up, misses. She was fouled. No call. 
Lions coming the other way. Williams to Mills. Mills to Olden Dick. Three point shot by Williams. Misses. Drummond's down with the board. Lays it up and in. Nice play there by Madison. Mills guarding Runyon, who goes all the way to the room with the left hand. A really, really late foul call from underneath the basket. So that'll be the second on Mills. As Jenkins and Lovejoy check back in, Mills and Williams will take a seat. For Earlham, Gibson checks back in as Nolan takes a seat. She misses the first. Makes the second. Jenkins will handle the point guard duties now with Mills on the bench. Jenkins thinks about a long three. Lions working around the high post and Drummonds who tries to pass it in the middle to Gingrich. Gingrich wisely lets it go out of bounds off of Shelton. Amari Wright will check back in for Earlham as the leading scorer for the Quakers, Abby Parsons, takes a seat. That ball is stolen away on the inbound pass. This is Bright going coast to coast. Gingrich did a good job of stopping the ball. This is Runyon, left elbow extended around a screen to Bright. He bangs in the three. Erlen back ahead by two. Jenkins brings it across. Ryan struggling a little bit with the zone. It's, the Mount keeps trying to do that high post, low post pass, and it, unable to get it to go so far. This is Lovejoy with the three. Rolls around, rebound by Gingrich, blocked. Drummonds goes up, she misses. And eventually Earl comes down with the board and is going the other way. This is Wright. Wright to the front of the rim, misses long. Gingrich down with the board. Lovejoy going the other way. Wisely slows it up just a touch to allow her teammates to catch up with her. Jenkins skip past the Olden Dick. Into the high post for Gingrich. To Drummonds in the low post. The Olden Dick in the corner. Drummonds from about 18 feet thought about a shot. This will be Lovejoy for three. Misses long. Drummonds had a shot at the rebound. But Bright comes down with it for Earlham. Around a screen from Shelton. They keep running that high ball screen just to get the line switching defense, and they do a good job of it there. Shelton goes up. I think Gingrich got a piece of that. Erlen Coach wants a foul. Not sure he was going to get one for that. Jenkins, left elbow three, misses long. Erlen will come quickly. This is right. Wisely, she backs it back out, set up the offense. This will be a ball screen. They want to get right or bright on one of the Lions' bigs, and they've done it about every time down the floor. Gibson to Runyon. Shelton. This is right or bright. Bright with the step back three at the end of the horn. Misses it. Gingrich down with the board. Drummonds wisely gets it off the Olden Dick before she carries. That ball is bouncing up around her shoulders. Lions get into their set. High post here for Gingrich. She's made a couple of those already. Banks that one in from the right elbow. Give her four. And this is Bright. Bright, man, I keep messing them up. I apologize to any early people watching. 11 and 12, and they're very similar body styles. I'm just trying my best here. This is Runyon around a screen from Shelton. She is fouled by Gingrich, but it's not called. Gibson goes all the way to the rim, lays it up and in, and gets the foul. <laughs> Haley Gingrich looks a little bit gassed out there right now. We'll have our first media timeout here in the second quarter. We'll be right back. 
with more action. All right, Bailey Gibson will go to the line trying to finalize that three-point play. Balls up and good. Ireland with a three-point lead. Lions go the other way. This is Jenkins. Gets it into. Oh, Chloe is back into the ball game. Jansen into the low post. That's Stivers lays it up and then nice pass there by Chloe. Nice shot by Ella. Lines back within one as Erwin goes the other way. Chloe almost picks up her third there. That would have been a rough foul call for Chloe. Turnover by Bright as Jenkins takes it away. This is Lovejoy in the corner. He's got to be ready to shoot that thing. Ella lays it up and then again misses. Erlen quickly goes the other way. This is Bright with the ball, right elbow. Gets it to Runyon. Runyon will reset the offense. Runyon left to right crossover into the paint. Nice pass off there from to Bright. And there's the third foul on Chloe. Just a play she didn't need to make. Chloe will go back to the bench, likely for the rest of the half. Checking in for Chloe will be number 25, Mackenzie Butler. This is Amari right at the free throw line. Misses the first. And the second, but Erlen comes down with the offensive rebound. As a coach, that's something you'll never be happy about. And instantly, Coach Elston sends Gingrich to the table to check back in. Runyon setting the offense, being guarded by Lovejoy. Lions defense really extended right now. They continue to switch that high ball screen. They're unable to get it off. That'll go down as a shot clock violation and a turnover for Erlen. Kelly Gingrich checks back in. As Butler takes a seat. Olden Dick to Jenkins, wide open in the corner. Morgan's got to take that. She has to take that shot every time. Eventually it will fall. Morgan's too good of a shooter to pass that thing up. This is Parsons' right elbow. We have another foul on the Lions. Fouls currently are six to three, line six, Erlen three total in this game. It's the fourth foul in 
the second quarter, so Erlem will be in the bonus the rest of the way. Shelton has checked back in for Erlem. Parsons takes a seat. This is Bright. Bright tries the one-handed pass. It's a turnover. Jenkins goes the other way. Jenkins puts her head down, go to that left-handed layup, misses it. There's a timeout called by the Erlem coaching staff as Bright was in a really bad spot in this corner over here. So we'll have a timeout on the floor. We'll be right back with the final 2.29 of the first half. Erlem will inbound the basketball. Left side of your screen. Bright brings it across. This is Lovejoy defending. They're looking for Shelton. Find Shelton in the right corner. Gets it off to right. Another screen for the Lions, or for Erlem. Oh, nice little up and under there from right. And then she picks up a pretty cheap foul after the rebound. Lions have the ball, trailing by one with an opportunity to try to take the lead here late in the first half. Holden Dick around a screen from Gingrich. Gets it to Jenkins. Jenkins with a nice backdoor pass to Gingrich who turns and shoots and makes it. Big shot there from Haley to put the Lions back ahead. And Haley sits in the ball game. This is Amari Wright. Dribble handoff with Bright. Bright working on Lovejoy, tries to get to that to the basket with that right hand, is unable to do so. Almost has another turnover. It's gonna be a jump ball. Possession arrow is in favor of the mount. As Parsons check back in for Earlham. Wright will take a seat. Jenkins. Gets it off to Lovejoy. They work around the top. This is Stivers to Olden Dick. Olden Dick with the three. Misses long. Ball bouncing around. It'll be another jump ball. The possession arrow favors the Quakers. Erlem trailing late here in this first half, looking for a bucket to go ahead. Runyon being guarded by Amanda Lovejoy. Around another high ball screen. Gibson gets it into Shelton, who's working on Stivers. Lays it up with the right hand, unable to get it to go. Nice rebound by Gingrich, and then a foul on that rebound attempt by Runyon. Every foul called today, the players cannot believe it's on them. It's been pretty funny to watch. We are under a minute to play here in the first half. The Mountain leading 27-26. Lovejoy, this is Gingrich to Olden Dick. Olden Dick to Jenkins at the top of the key. Lions continue to look at the post. Olden Dick takes the three, misses. Nice rebound by Gingrich. She's blocked on the layup attempt. Jenkins comes down with the offensive rebound. Lions. Get into fresh 20 second shot clock. Jenkins gets it into Stivers. Stivers cross court to Ellie. Ellie, nice little up and under play. It's taken away, blocked by Gibson. Lions will have just three seconds on the shot clock when they get this ball in bounds. Gotta go quickly. Oh, they're gonna give him 20, so the shot clock is off now. Lions can hold for the last shot. I believe that's the right call. I think Parsons had it and had it knocked out of her hands. This is Stivers. Try to go 
to Jenkins in the post, turn it over. Now Erlen will have an opportunity to shoot the last shot of the first half. This is Bright. On the screen, Parsons for three. Misses it. Lions get the board. They have five seconds. Got to go quickly. Ellie Oldendick will chuck it up probably from the three-point line. Just misses left. So we head to halftime. Mount St. Joseph leading the Earlham Cougars 27-26 here on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network.
All right, we are back here for the second half of action. Just 10 seconds left on the halftime clock. The Lions will go with Jansen, Mills, Jenkins, Olden, Dick, and Drummonds. And it looks like Earlham will go with their starting five as well. So Gibson, Bright, Runyon, Parsons, and Noland are on the floor for Earlham. And we are underway. Here in the second half, Jansen has it with those three fouls. Jansen only able to play two minutes in the first half and pick up three fouls. Olden Dick from the right corner misses. Gibson comes down with the board for Earlham. They will go the other way. This is Bright. Gets it to Gibson around a couple of screens back to Bright. Nice backdoor cut there from Nolan. Tries to go with the up and under layup. Misses Parsons with the offensive rebound. <coughs> Erlen backs it out as Bright will reset the offense. Trying to go to the rim on Drummond's Runyon. To the corner, Nolan Gibson from the left elbow. Goes all the way to the rim and lays it up and in on Mills. Mills with those two fouls, unable to play too aggressively on that. This is Jenkins from straight away. Mills, right corner. Bang! Carly Mills. That's Mills. Ninth points of the ball game. Her third three-pointer. Shooting three of five from three. Olden Dick guarding Runyon. Runyon goes in and throws it away. Called off the lines. I'm pretty sure nobody touched it. Coach Elston wants the official to ask for help, but doesn't look like that's going to happen. Bright will inbound. Baseline left as you're looking at your screen. Parsons has it inbound. Dribble handoff to Gibson. Back to Parsons. This is Bright. Being guarded by Jansen. Runyon. Wright gets it off at the horn. Misses. Drummonds comes down with the board. Not even sure if she got that off. Jenkins travels in the open floor. She tried to get the pass off to Mills there, but stumbled a little bit on the pass. And that 
did travel for sure. So with 8-11 here to play in the third, Lions lead 30-28. to 28. Bright brings it the other way for Earlham. It is alumni day here at Mount St. Joseph for the women's basketball program. Really nice to see some of the older alumni show up. Bright shuffled her feet a little bit on setting up for that three. Misses, Jenkins comes down with the board, takes it the other way. Good thing about this Lions team outside of Drummond, whoever comes down with the defensive rebound can easily lead the break. Drummond's high post, kicks it to Olden Dick. Jansen has Nolan buried. Nice inbound or in pass to Jansen from Olden Dick, gets the foul. Mills will inbound right baseline for the Lions. To get a new 20 second on the shot clock, this is a, another shoe tying timeout. Second one in the last minute or so. Chloe catches Jenkins to Jansen. Jansen considers the three. Nice skip pass to Mills. Ooh, just short. Mills thought that was buried. Erland brings the other way. This is Parsons. Parsons around the screen from Gibson. That'll go down as a turnover on Parsons. Shelton checks in as Nolan takes a seat. Lions have the ball back, nursing that two-point advantage. Olden Dick, quick trigger three, misses short. Olden Dick tries to make a really good play there to throw it off of Gibson, but it bounces up. Shelton goes the other way. Has it taken away from Jenkins. Jenkins, nice bounce pass to Ellie. Ellie's blocked, but gets a foul on Gibson. That will be the second on Gibson. Erlen with 13 turnovers in this ball game already. Lions just seven. Olden Dick will go to the line to shoot a pair. Ellie, a 66% free throw shooter on the season. And that just went up with that make. Pushes lines ahead three. Makes the second as well. Profitable trip to the free throw line for Ellie. This is Runyon bringing it across, being guarded by Mills. Just a little bit of token pressure. That'll be an offensive foul, an illegal screen on 42. Shelton, she stuck her hip out a little bit as Mills went past. It's a good call in the open court. Mills steps into a three, rolls it in, shooter's roll. Looks over and gives Coach Elfton a little bit of a shrug. A little bit of a heat check from Carly. That's her 4-3 of the game. Bright goes to the rim and is fouled by Mills. That'll be Mills' third foul. So Jansen and Mills both have three. Annabelle Williams will check in for Carly. Wright is at the free throw line. Bright, a 62% free throw shooter, makes the first. Pulls Erlen back to within six, can cut it to five with this second free throw. It's up, and it's good. Exchange a pair of free throws here. Jenkins quickly into the paint, lays it up with the right hand, misses. Is going to get a foul going after the rebound. That'll be Morgan's first. A little bit out of control, heading to the rim. And then on the rebound attempt, she definitely pushed. Runyon has it. Great job by Chloe to cut that off. Finally able to 
beat that ball screen. Shelton to the corner for Runyon, quick head fake. Runyon lays it up and in. Chloe did a good job of not committing that fourth foul there. Jenkins brings it the other way as Erlen back within three. Chloe to Morgan. Drummonds, baseline. Williams to Olden Dick from the corner. Misses short. That'll go off of Erlen and stay here. Erlen thinks it hit something above the rim, which would be an out of bounds, but the officials are not calling it. Haley Gingrich checks back in as Madison Drummonds takes a seat. Jenkins wide open in the middle of the paint, lays it up and in. Nice out of bounds play there from the Lions. Morgan just came around the screen, a little curl, and was lost by the Erlen defenders. Bright rejects the screen this time, tries to get all the way to the rim on Jenkins, lays it up and in. Coach Elson screams for her team to go. Chloe, nice move there. Back to Williams, who travels on the setup. Wright checks in here as Parsons will take a seat. Maryland inbounds, this is Bright. Bright hands it off to Bailey. Bailey around the screen from Shelton and Bright. Lions continue to switch everything. This is Wright being guarded by Olden Dick to Bright to Runyon. Trying to get it to Shelton in the post. Shelton lays it up and in with the right hand. Lions were late to get to the help there. Haley Gingrich was late getting over for the help. The whole bench was screaming for help. Morgan Jenkins just got away with a carry. Chloe with a nice pass into Gingrich. She lays it up and in. Get Gingrich eight. Oh, nice block there by Gingrich. And then has it taken back away by Bright. Will go down as a jump ball. We have our first media timeout of the second half. Mount St. Joseph leads our own 39-36 with 4.24 to play in the third. After the inbound, Wright goes with the right-handed layup and misses. Lions go the other direction, looking to extend the lead. Jenkins pulls, misses. Williams has the rebound. Gingrich eventually comes down with it. J Jansen gets it, goes up, is blocked. Jenkins comes down with the offensive board. Lions will smartly reset the offense. Jansen in the high post, gets it down to Gingrich, lays it up and in. Good job. Good play by the Lions. There's that high, high post, low post pass. 
Chloe doing a really good job, although she's so close to 1,000 points, of not forcing the issue and trying to score makes the smart play. This is bright to right. Runyon. Looking for Shelton in the high post. Gets it off to Bright. Bright to Bailey in the corner. To Shelton in the post. Shelton is almost tied up by Gingrich. Earlham has to chuck it at the horn. Goes off the left side of the rim and well out of bounds. So the Lions will have it to inbound. On the left side of your screen. Jansen into Jenkins. Olden Dick, oh, nice entry pass to Gingrich, but it glances just off her hand and, ex and goes out of bounds for a turnover. Here in a second, we'll be excited to be joined by Chuck Murray. Get him a headset here. Runyon, nice pass back to Shelton. Probably should have taken the first look at it instead of putting it on the ground. Jansen comes down with the board. Jansen goes the other way. Nice pass by Chloe. Haley unable to catch it. It'll be another turnover on the Lions. Ellis Divers checks in as Ellie Olden Dick takes a seat. And we are happy to be joined by Mount St. Joseph Assistant Athletic Director Chuck Murray, who's going to Join us for a little bit of the action today. Yeah, good to be with you, Blake. It's a nip and tuck game we got going here. This is Jay Bright bringing it across. Gets it off to Parsons, who has nine points in the game. Is it three threes? Parsons gets in a bit of a tough spot. Gets it off to Shelton. This is Runyon. Nice dribble pass out. Nice pass down there. Got it down as a foul by Stivers. Tough. She was yeah. just in a tough spot there. Yeah, she tried to hold up there, but she her her momentum, she kind of crashed into her a little bit there. So, the game's a little bit closer than I think we all anticipated. Uh, but Earlham hit some threes in the first half, and uh, looks, looks looks like we made a little bit of an adjustment, so they're not getting as many threes off this quarter. This is Bailey with it after the inbound pass. Looks into Shelton. Nice pass there. Nice recovery by Gingrich to get the block. Jenkins comes down with the board. Yeah, she got beat there back door, but rebounded the block the shot. Jenkins, nice pass into Gingrich, who lays it up and in. Haley Gingrich has had a fantastic game here today. Yeah, she looks really good. We're starting to separate a little bit. We had a seven-point lead a couple minutes ago, then they got back to two. So let's get a couple stops and get this into double digits. This is Bright bringing it across. Gets it to Parsons, the shooting threat from Earlham, and we'll have another... Illegal screen by number 42, Shelton for Earlham. You know, you see a lot of illegal screens at this level. They just, for whatever reason, can't keep their feet set, and there's probably a lot that are missed, too. Correct. Jenkins gets it off to Annabelle Williams. Williams to the high post, and Gingrich thinks about the shot, gets it to Chloe. Chloe goes baseline, nice pass back to Gingrich, short, and Shelton comes down with the board. Decent offense there from the Lions, though, yeah, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Chloe's really become, in her last couple of years, more of a distributor than a scorer. She makes some nice passes there, just unfortunately not able to finish. Zarlem has it going the other way. This is Runyon. Gets away with a yeah, walk. she did get away with a travel there. Back to Bright, back to Runyon. Bailey to Shelton. Lions in a zone. Or like a more of a matchup man, I guess. As Parsons gets buried a little too far under the rim, misses. Jenkins comes down with the board. Jenkins all the way to the rim with her left hand. Nice play by Morgan Jenkins. Yeah, Morgan can go to her left. Not many kids at this level can go uh, to, the, to the weak uh, or opposite hand. This is a three by Parsons. She bangs it in. Yeah, again, we cannot leave her open. That dribble drive penetration is, is difficult for the Lions to recover from. Yeah, for some reason, we're doubling a lot, and they, you don't need to. Make them make that tough two-pointer two and not give up an open three. Jenkins in the right corner with it to Williams. Lions work it back across to Jansen. Gingrich in the high post. A lot of standing around right now from Lions offense. Morgan won't yeah. stand around, though. And the ball gets it to Chloe. Chloe from the corner. Bang! Chloe Jansen with the three. Big three-pointer there. 
Lions now lead by nine with just eight seconds to go. Yeah, and there's a foul. A foul. Again, Erlen going to their, she's got a strong right hand, and I know I'm sure Maisie has told the girls, like, take away that right hand, but uh, sometimes that's easier said than done, and she draws the foul. Fortunately, they're not in the bonus. Checking back in for the Lions at that stop were Ellie Oldendick and Madison Drummond as Gingrich and Jansen take a seat. Buy them an extra couple seconds of rest. Right with a fadeaway shot. It's nowhere close. Olden Dick will get credit for a rebound because it happened before the end of the quarter. Right at the end of the third, Lions lead 48, Earlham 39. We'll be right back on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. All right, we're back. We're going to chat a little bit before this th fourth quarter gets underway. Uh, quickly, Lions leading again 48-39. Lions shooting 38% from the field here in this game. Uh, quick shout-out, uh, Seton girls basketball team is in attendance today. Really good to see the local high schools come out and support. Yeah, it's, it's really a good thing. We love uh, having them here and hosting them, and uh, they get a chance to see our team play maybe uh, – you know, maybe a couple of them will end up playing for us someday. Yeah, one of their assistant coaches actually played on the women's soccer team here the year that we went to the NCAA tournament, Lindsay Sturwald. Yep. Um, she came over and spoke to me a little bit. Um, I guess they were here for our summer uh, camp, team camp, and yep. their one of their coaches has stayed in contact with Maisie, using Maisie as a resource. This is Mills for three. Rolls in, misses. Shelton down with the board. Bright takes it the other way for Earlham. This is Shelton, right baseline. Tries to work on Stivers, is unable to turn over. This is Williams going the other direction. Yeah, got the late foul call there. She, she got her right away and they let it go and she got her on that one. So that foul was on Bright. I believe her first of the ball game. Teams first. Mills top of the key gets it off to Drummonds. Drummonds with a skip pass to Williams. Drummonds in the high post. She's capable of making that shot. Mills with a nice entry pass. Gets it. Drummonds to Stivers. That's a, it's kind of a tough foul. Yeah. She was wrapped up a little bit. Yeah, she went straight up, reached over. Didn't seem like there was a lot of contact. A lot of times as an official, you know, you're, it looks bad. Yep. But a lot of times those aren't fouls. But unfortunately, Madison got called for that one. It almost looked like Bailey had the arm trap of Madison. This is Runyon, Runyon to Parsons. Parsons with the left hand to lay up, misses. Had a shot at the offensive rebound, but eventually Ellis Divers comes down with it. Olden Dick brings it the other way. Mills will absolutely shoot this one. Bang! Carly Mills! That's an NBA three-pointer. That's right? a heat check three-pointer, yeah, too. That's a, that was starting to open up a little bit. We, we were thinking this might happen earlier, but took a while. Erla misses again. Annabelle Williams comes down with the board. Lions go the other direction. Olden Dick, nice, nice entry pass. pass to Stiver. Oh. She misses. Gets her in rebound, lays it up. We'll have a foul on Bailey. Yeah, the Lions are starting to kind of show their uh, their muscle a little bit here with a open up a 12 point lead with 8:16 to go. Carly Mills with a couple of big threes here in the last few minutes. Mills has a game high 15, five of nine from three point range. Yeah, he'll take that all day long and twice on Sunday. Mills had been struggling a little bit coming into the game shooting again. She came into the game shooting just. Uh, 27% from the three-point line on the year. Yeah. That's surprising with, with Carly. Yeah. 
but it's one of them. Just keep shooting. We know she's a good shooter. I'm sure Maisie feels the same way. Ella made her first and the second. Good free throw shooting today by the Lions. Makes him six of eight from the free throw line in the game. This is Runyon. This yeah, Lions doing a good job taking away the three. It's a nice layup there. Again, she goes to her strong right hand. Time. time out there. I thought for a second they were going to call Mills for the flop. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back again. Lions lead 53-41 with 7.56 to go here in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. All right, as we come out of the timeout here, timeout, that one was called by Earlham. It was their third called timeout in this game, leaving them with just one for the remainder of the game. On the court right now for the Lions, it's Mills, Drummonds, Jenkins, Williams, and Stivers. For Earlham, it is Parsons, Nolan, Runyon, Bailey, and Gibson. Or Brighton Gibson, my apologies. Earlham with a little token pressure there. Yeah, trying to speed the lines up just a little bit. Staying in this zone, though. Yep. Maisie in her pregame comments expected to play a lot of zone. Morgan Jenkins, left side three. Bang! Morgan Jenkins, she needed that bad. 0-5 in the game. She just 18% from three on the year. It's a big shot by Morgan. Yeah, she's kind of, she goes, so go the Lions. She has an opportunity to be one of the very best basketball players in this Heartland Conference. Absolutely. This is bright. Between the circles, again that high ball screen, Lions switching everything, turnover there. Williams will get the steal, but Jenkins created it. Jenkins all the way to the rim, lays it up and in, and one. Five-point run by Morgan Jenkins. You know, Blake, this game looks like it's going to end up lopsided, but for three quarters, I think we were all thinking, hey, what's going on here? This isn't supposed to be like this. Amari Wright is checking back in for Erlum as Nolan takes a seat. Give Earlham a lot of credit. They came to play today. Absolutely. Running out of gas a little bit here yeah. in the fourth, but they're, they're facing one of the top three programs in this conference right now as Jenkins makes the free throw. This is Bright. Nice right to left crossover. Gets it in. Bright thinks about the three. Wisely turns it down. Gibson gets it back over to Bright. Bright, pounding it into the ground, looking for a spot to get a shot. It's under 10. A, we're going to have Erlem retain possession. Says that someone blocked it out of bounds. Then I guess if I'm statting this game, you got to give her credit for a block. Yeah. So Gingrich Morgan should and, uh, get credit for a block there. Yeah, Gingrich and Jansen back in the game for the Lions. This looks like Williams and Stivers take a seat. I like what Stivers has done today, as you mentioned earlier. Another turnover for Earlham. Mills will get the steal, but once again, it's the long arms of Morgan Jenkins kind of creating that. Jansen, nice skip past the Jenkins. She's feeling it now. Yep. Bang, Morgan Jenkins! Yeah, they're playing nice and loose right now. Morgan up to 13 quickly. As Earlham goes hard to the rim, unable to get it. To go. Jenkins again. <laughs> really nice pass here by Carly. Jenkins is on a 10-0 run of herself, of her own. <laughs> Pushes the Lions lead out to 23 with six minutes to play here. And for all intents and purposes, this game is probably out of reach now for the yeah. Quakers. Yeah, and 
for a while there, we were all on kind of pins and needles. This is a three-point game yep. five minutes ago. Right. Uh, we lost this is right. Misses short. Drummonds looks to be hobbled just a touch. I think she got a knee to the thigh on one of those screens. Mills tries to go to the rim, is cut off, but the foul will go against Willow Runyon of Earlham. I really like the way the Lions push the ball down the court. He, and constantly, I was sitting down at the table, Coach Nelson, let's go, let's go, let's go. You know, I always like transition basketball rather than set it up, you pass around five times and turn it over. Get it and go. Yeah, I really and like the way they play. I agree. When you look at, they've played 11 players, and, you know, Whitney Warfel, the leading scorer on the team coming in is, That'll be a foul on, I don't know who that is that just checked in. I can't see the number until uh, she turns around. 23. Yeah, that's that's Hudson. And again, that's one of them, Blake, she went up. It yeah. looked like she just tapped it back, but it looks like she's over on her back, so they, Earlham gets the call. What I was getting to before, coach has played 11 players today. If you're going to play that many, you should run, and that's without right. Aaliyah and Whitney Warfel. Is now... Looks like Gingrich will get charged with that yeah. foul is my guess. Yeah, that's a bailout. She had no chance of making that. But you see that quite often. A lot of times, it, it, you know, people driving the lane and kind of throw it up and they get fouled and they get bailed out. It's, the percentages of them making it are probably slim and none, but uh, she got the call. Sends Willow Runyon to the line to shoot two. Misses the first. It's kind of like that football play where you just throw it up and hope to get past interference. Absolutely, yep. And you get it a lot. Uh, you get those calls a lot. Onion makes the second. This is Hudson, gets it into Mills. There's that pressure from Earlham again. Jansen does a great job of holding the ball up just enough to get it to Mills. Jenkins. Illegal screen. Yep. Good, because Morgan missed that one. Yep, yep. It's an illegal screen on Hudson. That's a good call. That's a good call. Again, we're seeing more illegal screens than – and I can remember over the years, it seems like this year, and especially in the women's game, we've seen tons of illegal screens. This is Jay Bright bringing it up the floor for Earlham for the first time on the floor. I did not see a high ball screen as Runyon does a good job of losing Chloe there and just getting to the rim, makes a nice shot. Mills picks that up in a tough spot. Gingrich have a timeout. On the floor, Mount St. Joseph calls it. It's a 30-second timeout that will be pushed to a media timeout. We'll be right back with 4.51 to play in the fourth. Lions lead by 20 here on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. All right, we're back here as the teams are coming out of the timeout. Once again, Lions lead by 20. Out rebounding Earlham 41 to 29. They have 15 offensive rebounds in the game. Yeah, if you just tuned in, again, a very misleading score. It was a very tight, I think we were up, what, one or two at half, and it's been close up until the last few minutes. Gingrich with another good look at it, misses. Erlund gets it, goes the other way. Ball knocked away by Jansen. Unable to secure the steal, though. Right. Around a screen, a couple of screens. Nice behind the back dribble. Gets into a tough spot. Jenkins went knee to knee with her. Runyon. Gets the foul call on Chloe. Maybe, maybe got the body a little bit there. That'll be four on Chloe. Again, typically when they foul, and it, it, it's not a big mystery, it's when they're going to their strong hand. If we can make them go to their left or their, uh, their weaker hand, it's a lot harder shot to make. But again, easier said than done. So checking in for the first time. Yeah, Caitlin Riley's a 5'6 freshman from uh, Dayton Wayne. She'll check in for the first time after the second free throw. 
if it's made. It is. Arlen cutting the lines lead to 18. Got to assume that's probably it for Chloe today. Yeah. Again, become more of a facilitator here last year. Uh, oh. Just away. She expected Jenkins to stop, and Jenkins was trying to get herself in position. Riley with the turnover just a second into her first action of the day. Whatever you do as a Lions, you can – Play a lot of players here, but you don't want to get sloppy here. Right, right. You want to finish strong. What do we got now? Maybe with a shot clock or something? It should have been reset to 30. We reset it to 20. All right, so good catch there by the referee. Nice cut there by Bailey Gibson. Bright gets it out to Runyon. Gibson thinks, or Bright thinks about the three. Running right-handed floater, misses. Gingrich comes down with the board. Notice how she had to go to the left, the tougher shot. Jenkins to Mills. Mills back to Jenkins. Three minutes ago, Jenkins was shooting that. Oh, a little no-look pass back to Mills. Misses it long. This is Wright with the running rebound going the other way. She's going to try to get this all the way to the rim. Jenkins does a good job of staying upright. Forces the miss. Mills is going the other way. And probably got away with a little bit of a carry there. Yeah, yeah. Little spin move, right-handed layup. She missed, but she was fouled. So Mills will go to the line to shoot a pair. The foul was on number 11, Jay Bright. Yeah, I think Bright's a very solid player for them. She, she's really impressed me today. She's their leading scorer coming into the day. Mills misses the first. It, I think that's Amanda Lovejoy. Okay. Mills misses the second. She knew she was coming out. <laughs> and a treble on Bright, on right this time. I'm not sure I love that call. Amanda Lovejoy checks in as Mills will probably be done for the day. Yeah, she's a junior from West Claremont here and, and locally in the area. Mills is finishing with a team high 15 right now. Hudson thinks about the three. Jenkins doesn't think about it. She pulls it, misses it. There was a foul on Kennedy Hudson. Yep, that was legit. Get another sub come in. It's going to be Mackenzie Butler. She's a 5'9 junior from uh, Gasden, Tennessee. I know that Coach Elston and Coach Lysick were high on Butler when she was coming in as a transfer. She had a little bit of an injury early in camp and was unable to, you know, fit, pick everything up. She's starting to figure it out and getting a little more playing time here of late. As Runyon makes the first. The foul did actually put her in the bonus. Uh, automatic two shots. Down to a 17-point lead. She misses. Jenkins gets the rebound. Right away. Took it away. Foul. Misses. Gibson gets the rebound and makes. Jenkins going to try to beat this press on her own this time. And she does. Has it knocked away by Bailey Gibson. Good on our own for not giving up here. Yeah. It would have been easy to go into the tank if you're the Quakers. And they're still fighting hard here with 3.15 to play. They've cut a 20-point lead down to 15. Lions helping them out by letting them score with the clock stopped at the free yeah. throw line. Riley gets it to Jenkins. This is Butler. Nice skip pass to Caitlin Riley, who gets a nice quick pass into Gingrich. Jenkins, nice head fake. Stops and drills it. Morgan Jenkins, give her 17 for the ball game. A nice touch around the basket. Sometimes them 10-footers can be a little tougher than you think. Oh, we were talking this morning with the guys that I played with in the past. The mid-range game is completely gone yeah. for the game of basketball. Yeah. That's Mo considered a bad shot. Morgan Jenkins does not agree. She got yeah. she, they did call the trail that time. To travel on Bright. That is her fifth turnover of the ball game. Blake, so I, I want to give a shout out to Steve Sackis, this Orange baseball coach. I don't know if Steve's watching or listening, but if you are, Steve, a happy New Year. See you in the spring. Steve's one of the good guys in the baseball league at, here, here in the Heartland Conference. He's done a tremendous job up here. Butler has checked back in for the Lions and Gabrielle Johns has checked in for Earlham to go along with Nikki Alston. 
and I believe that is Madison Ruersma. This is Lovejoy to Butler. Tries to go with the tough entry pass to Gingrich. That's a jump ball. Possession area favors the Quakers. For a second there, I thought they were going to give the Lions the Lions ball back. This is number 10, Jasley Hubble. Wright has the ball, brings it across. 2.14 to play. For those of you who are watching and interested, please stick around on this stream. We will have some post-game interviews with a couple of Lions players. My guess is it's going to be Morgan Jenkins and Carly Mills who join us. Um, we will be live with those hopefully within five minutes after the end of this game, um, and then we'll bring you the men's game afterwards. Yeah, that should be a good one. Kaylin Riley with the three. Oh, just misses. It looked good. It looks really good, good coming out of her hands. Yep. Nice try to the basket there. Made her go left. She made it, but that's what you want to do. That was Amari Wright with yeah. the bucket. She's impressed me, as I said. 15-point lead for the Lions with just over a minute to play. Skip pass to Butler. This is Riley again. Just misses another good-looking shot. Lovejoy gets the rebound. Lions can waste another 20 seconds. The bench wants her to yeah. shoot another one. Yeah. She will. Misses short. Oh, long rebound out of bounds. And that was Patterson on that last three-point attempt. Yeah, it looks like uh, Hudson's coming back into the game. Actually, as I said, a freshman from Bloomfield, Indiana. One minute to go. This is Hubble. Gets it back. Try to get it back to right. Right didn't come get it, though. Johns has it. Dribbles, goes to the rim, lays it up and in. Yep. Good shot by Gabriel Johns. I think coming down the stretch here, the Lions are going to have to really focus on taking away that strong hand. Most of them, 95% um, have been with the right or the strong hand. This is Riley to Butler in the high post. Lovejoy looking for Hudson in the post. Has to go skip past O'Reilly. Butler will turn and shoot. Bangs it in. Nice shot by Butler. Yeah, nice touch there. Can't imagine this stage of the game with 20 seconds ago there's an issue. Shot clock could be turned off because. Shot clock is turned off. I think they were upset that the, the game clock didn't stop after they made bucket. All right, there you go. The last minute it should stop. This is right coming the other way. Gets it to Johns. Johns shoots it. Short missed. Able to get her own rebound. Bangs it off of Patterson. And now Earlham will retain the possession with 8.9 to play. Lions will escape with the win here today. Pulled away here late in the game. Another nice job. Good defense there by Hudson. Yeah, at the end of the year, you just add them up, W's and L's. It really doesn't matter what the final is. I'm sure Coach Elson's going to be a lot happier with the second half than she was the first half. They'll move to 11-2 and on the season, 4-1 and in HCAC play. Nice little bucket there by Nikki Alston, sophomore guard from Marion, Indiana. Lions will dribble it out. All right, we will be back in about five minutes with some post-game interviews. Um, again, stick with this channel, and then after that, we will have the men's contest for you. So we will see you in a couple of minutes with those post-game interviews. Again, my name is Blake Watson. Chuck Murray joining me for this last little bit of the second half. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you guys soon.
All right, we are here post game with Lions point guard. What's your name again? Carly, Carly Mills. Mills and Haley Gingrich. Guys, first off, congratulations on another big conference win. Thank you. Uh, Carly, I'm going to talk about you first. Obviously, you know, you ended up with 15 points. You only got to play 19 minutes tonight. A <laughs> little bit of foul trouble, a little bit of a uh, – a little bit of hecticness in that first half. Obviously, nobody probably expected Earlham to be that close late in the third quarter. What did you guys do well in the early, and then what did you guys do really well late? Yeah, so uh, definitely didn't start off how we exactly thought it would go. However, um, you know, Earlham, obviously we can't just let any team kind of do whatever. So we had to make some adjustments coming out of that half. Um, instead of doing a regular defense that we play, we – kind of switched it up a little bit and stayed more in the gaps of everything. Um, and I think that obviously benefited us a lot because we were able to take the lead further than what we had. Haley, I'm going to kick it over to you. Um, first off, congratulations on a heck of a ball game. You played really, really well. Thank you. 16 rebounds, two away from the school record. 18 rebounds is a school record in a game. So. I mean, what, what led to you being able to get so many rebounds? And, and obviously, you also scored it, too. You went 6 of 12 from the field. So what, what, was, what was the thing today that kind of led to your performance? I think this week at practice, we really focused on rebounding a lot. And my teammates really pushed me in practice every single day. And with some advice from Coach Elston, I was able to, I think, really lock in and focus today, which allowed me to get those boards. What about, I mean, you got really good touch around the rim. You guys were playing a lot of that high post to low post action with you and Drummonds or you and Ella or even Chloe at times. Was that part of the design of the, ga of the game, you think, today? Yeah, so at practice, we practiced a new method of getting lock in in the middle and sealing that middle person for the zone. So it allowed us to get that high look, low look a lot more often. Love it. Carly, obviously, I know how tight you and Morgan are. How, that run she had, she went to a 10 0 run by herself in the second half. Buried a couple of threes, went to the and one. What when you're when your really good friend and, and fellow backcourt mate has a run like that, what's that mean to you? Let me tell you something. Mo Jank was in her head for the first half, and I told her right before we started that second half, I said, Get out your head and look what she produced for us. I, I really was so excited for her and I think that obviously she's important for this game and this team and she managed to get out her head and that's really good. Guys, you're off to a fantastic start. It gets a little tougher from here. Get Franklin, get a couple of matchups with the number two team in the country here in a couple weeks. Uh, what's it going to look like at the end of the year? You guys ready to rock and roll the rest of the way? I mean, of course, we always got some stuff we need to work on, but I think for the most part, we're on our way. And we got Transy coming up, and then we got Franklin, which is also going to be another hard game. So we just got to keep working, keep going hard in practice, and I, I think we can do some great things this year. Carly, Haley, thank you for taking some time with us, guys. Congratulations. Go enjoy the win. Um, hopefully we'll talk to you again down the road. Thank, thank you. you.
All right, we are back here getting ready for this men's contest in this Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference doubleheader. The visiting Earlham Quakers come in with a 1 and 11 record on the year, 1 and 4 in the HCAC. The Lions 3 and 9 and overall, but 3 and 2 in the HCAC. Moved over 500 with that dominant 20 point win over Bluffton on Wednesday night. Likely the, the best performance for your Mount St. Joseph Lions on the season. Um, Lions got a 28 point effort from Luke Collinsworth and a 24 point effort from Jason Lavender. Uh, looks like they will get Matthew Menninger back today. He's out there warming up. He had missed the last couple of games with an ankle injury. Um, coming into this game, the Lions, the last two times, last matchups last year, um, Earlham and the Mount split their their games with each team winning on the opposing school's home court. And we're about ten and a half minutes prior to this contest. Uh, do not have starting lineups yet. We'll quickly go over the HCAC standings coming into today. Uh, leading the men's side, Transylvania with a 10-1 overall record, 5-0 in the HCAC. In the second place spot, Manchester 6-2 overall with 4-1 record in the HCAC. Anderson comes in third. There are three teams tied at 4-1 in the league. That's Manchester, Anderson, and Hanover. We'll just call it three teams tied. The Lions have moved up into that five spot with the win the other day. The only other team above 500 in the conference. Right behind them is Franklin, who the Mount will see here in the Harrington Center on Wednesday. Um, Rose Holman is one and three in conference play. Lions have beat them already this season on the road. We'll obviously face them here in Cincinnati later in the year. These are Arlem Quakers who got their first conference win just the other day against Defiance. Coming at one and four in the league, as we discussed earlier, and then Bluffton and Defiance both round out the bottom of the league yet to get a conference victory. And we are nine and a half minutes away from the start of game number two. We had a few minutes to sit down with Coach Kerrigan this morning prior to his team's contest. Here are Coach Kerrigan's comments. Very coachable. I asked him to change one thing on our side out of bounds. He did it the, the, the way I asked him to do it. And, and because he did it that way, he got a wide open three. Um, just stuff like that, that that's, that's little things that, uh, you know, that, that, that really help. One more performance I want to touch on from the other night's game, and then we'll move on to the Quakers. Um, Dylan Hammonds with 15 rebounds. A little bit undersized to be kind of playing that four role. I know he was a prolific rebounder and scorer in high school. Um, but what do you got to say about that freshman's effort? I mean, he's playing a ton of minutes for you, big spots. He, he seems like the kind of kid you can that will really grow into this program as, as he grows as a college athlete. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the things that rebounds about having a knack for the ball and, 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 and going after it. And obviously he did that in high school, and he's, he's continued to do that uh, since he's been on campus here. But, uh, yeah, that's a lot of rebounds. I don't know if I got that many in five games. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he, he's doing a great job. Coach, move to the Quakers now. Obviously, we talk a lot. Uh, the expectation is always that Earlham's going to be an extremely athletic group. Um, they fly up and down the floor. They want to score in transition. Um, what do you expect to see out of Earlham today? Yeah, they like to score in transition because they're so good in the half-court defense. They're uh, different than, than most teams in our league. They, they get out in passing lanes. They really press for the ball. Um, so you have to get yourself open offensively and, and handle handle a lot of ball pressure, um, which you know we're, we're going to have to be very good at today. Um, but but they've got th their two guards are, are really good. One average is 17. One average is 10. Um, they can put it on the floor, get to the rim. Their mid range game is super good. Uh, so we'll we'll have to be really good defensively against those guys. What, defensively, uh, just other than being good against those guys, I mean, what what's the idea? Is it do you you want to pressure those guys? Do you want to you know just try to speed them up? Do you want to slow the game down? What's the idea? Well, they also have a six ten center, um, which which you know you, you have to account for him. But they set a lot of ball screens, so it'll be a lot of you know we always talk about you have to guard a ball screen two on two. The, um, so we'll, we'll have to be be good at that. We'll have to be ready to switch when we need to. Um, but really, you know, just just take those guys away in their mid range. Don't don't send them to the foul line. Uh, we call it guarding your yard. You know, just being able to stay in front of the ball and and make them make tough shots. 
Final question, I'll let you go get ready for today's game. Um, back into league play, a couple of home games in a row. How important is it to your program and your team to get these home wins? You got to win at home. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna compete in this league and 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 have a chance at the end, you you have to win at home because it's it's so hard to win on the road. It's hard to win anywhere in the league, um, so you definitely have to take advantage uh, when when you're at home. Coach, good luck. All right, we are back. Thank you again for Coach Kerrigan for taking the time to uh, to talk to us pregame about the games today. Um, we're excited to see what the Lions could do against the Quakers today. Um, this is the a, a big night for the Lions. I mean, you got to expect to to have a challenge here from Earlham. Um, they are one of the more athletic teams in this conference, led by their point guard. Who scored 26 in a loss against Transy the other night? It'll be a little bit of a mix-up of styles. Lions kind of want to slow it down a touch, uh, play through big Luke Collinsworth as much as they possibly can. And Ken Walker leads the way for Earlham as the uh, their leading scorer. Um, so we'll be right back. We're trying to get a hold of some starting lineups. Uh, we will. We will. Uh, be back as soon as I can get those lineups to deliver them to you. Thank you for joining us today on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. All right, we now have our starting lineups for today's game. First, let's meet the visiting Earlham Quakers. A 6'2 sophomore guard from Lithia Springs, Georgia, Joffrey Nunnally. A 6'3 freshman guard from Villarica, Georgia, uh, Mylon Kennedy, who wears number one. Their leading scorer, a 5'10 freshman guard from Snellville, Georgia, Ken Walker. A sophomore guard wing type player from Christchurch, New, Ze New Zealand with the St. Andrews College, um, Jackson Rhodes. And in the middle, the 6'10", Chicago, Illinois, Adrian College transfer, Mike Williams. He is a senior. And for the Lions, they will go with freshman Dylan Hammonds. Uh, graduate student Jack Kohler, Jason Lavender gets his second start in a row on the wing. Willard Cluxton, the senior guard from Cincinnati Elder High School, and in the middle, big Luke Collinsworth. Again, for Earlham, that is Nunnally, Kennedy, Walker, Rhodes, and Williams. And for the Lions, Cluxton, Hammonds, Kohler, Lavender, Collinsworth. Just under two minutes to go here in 
the pregame before this contest kicks off. Um, quickly look back at the women's game, give you some stats from that game. As I load them on my computer. Lions win by a final score of 68 to 55. Move to five and one in the HCAC, 11 and two overall. They were led by a trio of double figure, figure scores. Morgan Jenkins with that late 10 point run got to 17. Well, another game where Morgan stuffs the stat sheets. Morgan ends with 17 points, seven rebounds, an assist, and five steals. Um, joining her in double figures was Carly Mills, who hit five three pointers in the game, shooting 50%, going five of 10. And the final uh, double figure scorer off the bench was Haley Gingrich with 16 points, or 12 points off the bench and 16 rebounds. Again, 16 rebounds was just two off of the school record. Huge performance today from the Lions. All, all told, they ended the game out-rebounding Earlham 46-37. to 37. Um, 17, I apologize, I thought that was 17 offensive rebounds. It was not. Um, they had 22 bench points. That's big, big for the Lions, getting 22 points off the bench. We are just about to hit the final buzzer before we kick this men's contest off. Um, we will meet our starting lineups here in the gym. Thanks again for joining us on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. My name is Blake Watson, Sports Information Director here at Mount St. Joseph. I will be joined at some point during this game by my good friend and colleague Chuck Murray, who is our Assistant Athletic Director, to bring you this contest. As one of our softball players runs around behind me, Casey Fincham, Again, for Earlham as we meet these starters, Nunnally, Nunnally, Kennedy, Walker, Rhodes, and Williams will start for Earlham. And for the Lions, it will be Cluxton, Hammonds, Kohler, Lavender, and Collinsworth. This will be probably the only time all year Luke Collinsworth's not the biggest person on the floor as he will face off with the 6'10 transfer, Mike Williams. It's a, it's a different style of big man, though, uh, for sure. Luke, more of the uh, power forward type player. Williams, long and lean. So Collinsworth today will likely have to try to finish through Williams instead of over top of him like he's been used to. Coach Kerrigan has a conversation with one of our officials. about something with the game ball, I guess. Coach Kerrigan talking to his team out on the floor right now. We will have Williams and Collinsworth at center court to jump it up. We are underway, the Lions win the tip. Cluxton has it, being guarded by Walker. Cluxton around Walker, trying to get it into Luke. An offensive foul on Collinsworth. That's a really tough call. If Collinsworth's gonna get that called on him all day, he's gonna have trouble scoring. He's very, very shocked by that call. This is Walker coming the other way, being guarded by Cluxton. Walker shoots from the corner, misses. Kohler comes down with the board. Cluxton off to Hammonds. Line. Collinsworth goes up and over. They're surprisingly guarding him with Jackson Rhodes instead of the big fellow Williams. Williams has been guarding Hammonds. This is Walker who has Cluxton on the block. Walker. Goes to the jump stop, up, misses. Collinsworth comes down with the board. Off to Cluxton. Cluxton has Hammonds, gets it up, nice pass. Laid it up with the left hand. Good job by Willard. I actually thought it was late. I thought he could get rid of it early and set Hammonds up, but it was a really smart decision by Willard. 
Walker around the screen from Williams. Gets it off to Nunnally. Nunnally working on Kohler. Good job by Jack. Earlham has to reset. We're going to have an offensive foul on the screen. The screen is on Williams. Draws the offensive foul. Honestly did not see that live, so not really sure what happened. So the Lions lead by two here early. As Cluxton brings it up. Walker. Nice give and go there, Cluxton and Collinsworth. Trying to do a little too much though. Cluxton was unable to catch the pass. This is Walker. Brings it over the timeline for Earlham. Gets it off to Nunnally. Nunnally rips baseline and tries to go. Williams screens Cluxton. They have a big time size advantage with Williams and Cluxton right now. But they decide to shoot the three as Kennedy misses long. Collinsworth comes down with his second board of the ball game. Kohler tries to get it into Hammonds, is unable to. Cluxton around the ball screen. This is Lavender from three. Misses long. It's got to be a foul on somebody. This is not good. Double foul on Hammonds and Williams. So that's the second on Williams already. This is Aiden Temple, freshman forward from Johns Creek, Georgia. Coach Schubers has done a, a lot of Georgia recruiting this year. We see that a lot in football throughout this conference, but don't see it much in basketball. That's Nunnally getting it to Walker on the block. Back to Nunnally who pulls quickly, misses everything. Dylan Hammonds comes down with the board. We had some issues with Collinsworth unable to finish through contact, lays it up and in, and gets the foul. Luke probably should have finished the first one, but in, in the end, we get the bucket and the foul. That foul go on 22, Temple. Collinsworth will go to the line to shoot one. He had some uh, issues with our crowd yelling at officials the other night. Um, it looks like it's going to be a little bit of the same tonight. Collinsworth, a 77% free throw shooter coming into this game and bangs in the first. And Lions lead 5 nothing. This is Walker. Lions with a little bit of 2-2-1 press. Not only going to break it with the left-handed dribble, gets it over to Kennedy. That is Rhodes, passes up to three. Gets it off to Nunnally, who gets a shot off. Lions eventually come down the board as Cluxton is on the floor. This is Lavender coming the other way. Right-hand dribble. Takes Nunnally to the paint. Up, misses short. We got a jump ball. The ball is, officials are talking to the table. I actually thought the jump ball should go to Earlham. I thought the Mount won the tip. Lavender gets it, Hammonds, nice pass into Luke. Luke rolls around, lays it up and in. Good shot by big, the big fella. Collinsworth has five already in the game. Luke with a little bit of aggressiveness on that take. This is Walker around a screen. Misses it long. Luke with his third board of the game. Cluxton brings it up. Looks for Hammonds on the quick post. Unable to get it there. Lavender looking in for Hammonds. Nice pass to Hammonds. Up and under. Fouled. Yeah, we got the call that time. That foul, I believe, will go against zero. Joffrey Nunnally. Timeout Earlham. We will be right back from the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network.
All right, we are back here coming out of the first media timeout. That timeout from Earlham was stretched into a media timeout because it was within the 30 seconds of um, the, what would be the media timeout. So Dylan Hammonds is headed to the line to shoot a pair here to try to push the lines, lead out to an early nine. Tripped over my headset, ladies and gentlemen, and made a little bit of a mess. So we're trying to clean that up as we go. Dylan Hammonds makes the first. Lines up eight. Makes the second. Walker will bring it up for Earlham. Left hand dribble, crossing the timeline. Left to right crossover. Gets it off to Nonnelly. I lost my Earlham roster, apologize, trying to find it. This is Walker. Gets into a tough spot, tries to throw it over the top to Williams. Cluxton takes it away. Cluxton pushing it the other direction. Tries to get it to Hammonds in the post. We're going to have another jump ball. This one will go to Earlham. The entry pass was a decent one, but the decision wasn't great from Willard there. Dylan didn't really have the seal. This is Walker. To Nunnally. Nunnally around a screen from the big fella. Pulls and shoots. Kohler has the board, has it taken away by Rhodes. Nunnally has it between the circles. This is Walker back to Nunnally, trying to get it to Williams in the post. Her own Chris Lee working around as Rhodes takes a three, misses. Kohler comes down with the board. Earlham is ice cold to start the game. Obviously, almost five minutes in, yet to score. Lions have got to capitalize and put some distance between themselves and the Quakers while they can. Kohler to Collinsworth. Cluxton to Collinsworth. Nice quick move by Luke. Lays it up and in. Oh, it misses. Good job on the floor by Luke. Great job. Good hustle. Lavender... That's, that's a tough call. Jason Lavender with a really nice take. It's a bit of a hero call over there. 22, checking back in is Aiden Temple as Mike Williams takes another seat. This is Walker. Temple. Dribble handoff with Walker. Walker gets all the way to the left block. And finally, Earlham is on the board. Cluxton brings it across. Luke being guarded by Temple. Cluxton to Hammonds. Hammonds gets all the way to the rim, lays it up with the left hand and in. Great job by Dylan Hammonds. Walker around a screen. Rhodes working on Hammonds. That's a travel. This is Nunnally calling for the screen. Kohler does a good job getting around it. Rhodes for three. Misses long. Cluxton comes down with a long rebound. Collinsworth, right elbow. Looks for... Lavender on the back cut, unable to get it. Lavender with the pullback dribble. Gets it to Cluxton. Collinsworth, nice back door from Jack Kohler. Good find from the big fella. Lions 13, Earlham 12. Fantastic cut there from Kohler and a good find from Collinsworth. Not only to Rhodes. Rhodes goes baseline on Hammonds. That'll be an offensive foul on Jackson Rhodes. To the officials' credit, they called the one on Lavender and in a very similar situation, they called the one on Rhodes. Rhodes takes a seat. Checking in number 13, Loki Onda from Portland, Maine. 
senior transfer from Thomas College. Cluxton, a little bit of a crab dribble, trying to get the ball to Hammonds. Hammonds hands it off to Cluxton. Hammonds around a screen for Big Fella, goes straight to the rim, lays it up and in. And we have our second timeout from the Earlham Quakers. Lions lead 15 to two here early in the first half. We'll be right back from the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. All right, we are back here. Arlen Ball out of bounds, left under. 15. Officials checking week the table to see if a player had checked in. I love when an official does that. Arlen, this is Nunnally. They're trying to work on Willard with Walker. This is Mylon Kennedy with the three from the right elbow, bangs it in. Good shot there, good offense from Earlham. Jason Lavender has it. Oh, nice over the top pass to Luke Collinsworth who lays it up and in. Good find from the freshman Lavender. Kennedy to Temple, back to Kennedy. This is, Anda gives it off. Walker with the stop and pop, nice shot from Ken Walker. Walker, again, the Earlham leading scorer. I love seeing a point guard that's willing to shoot from the mid-range. That's big. Cluxton trying to get into the gaps of the defense. Had Luke for a second. Kohler around the screen from Luke. Gets it off to Hammonds. Luke gonna back his way down in. <laughs> Luke with a little bit of an embellishment on that foul, but he will go to the line to shoot a pair. The foul will go against Nunnally. It's his second, team's sixth. We'll have our under 12 minute media timeout. We'll be right back with more action here on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. Right as Luke Collinsworth goes to the line to shoot a pair, we'll, we are happy to be joined by Lions women's head coach, Maisie Elston. Congratulations on another conference win, coach. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
Uh, talk to a couple of your players after the game. I, I, what can you say about the effort that Haley gave you today? Yeah, I mean, and I'll be honest with you, it's been every day for, I mean, you know, she wasn't seeing many minutes because uh, Warful was in and she was playing well. So it, it's hard to rotate, you know, when you've got two really, you know, and you've got Drummond and you've got her out there and then, you know, Warful got her and Haley has just stepped up every day in practice. She gives that effort every day, so. Yeah, she played outstanding. It was really cool to get her up there and do the interviews with the freshmen and you, you see, you can see she liked it. As Walker scored for Earlham, Collinsworth is blocked at the rim by Williams. Earlham has cut this lead to nine. Um, you know, we went into this game, I don't think anybody necessarily expected it to be that close for three quarters. Earlham played really well for a while. It wasn't really you guys playing bad. You didn't make it a ton of shots early. But, you know, what, what did that stretch out in the second half? How, to, how did that kind of happen for you guys? Yeah, and, and we spoke about it kind of uh, before. Like, uh, we just know everyone's going to sit in a 2-3 against us and make us shoot. Um, and the thing we got is we got to either shoot. Yeah, that was definitely a goal 10. Um, we've got to shoot with confidence or you've got to not shoot and get the next shot. But it, for us, it was kind of in the first half, I thought we caught it. We saw we were open. We didn't shoot it. And then we decided to shoot it. Uh, it was like a second, a second chance uh, fought for us. But I thought we did a good job, high-low action. Um, it, it, it helps when we have Chloe in there because she creates so much from the high post. And she was in foul trouble, so we got her back. We shifted some stuff defensively because Erlem does a good job getting to the rim, so we play more in the gaps. And, and I mean, I, we were fine. We, we didn't play our best, but, you know, we did what we did. And we didn't have nine. She's a huge spot for us. So I, I was proud of us. I mean, it, uh, yeah, it is what it is. It was uh, noticeable that they were trying to put you in that high ball screen action every time down the floor and get a switch onto one of your bigs with one of their little guards. Yeah, yep. I know, and we spoke about it, and, and that's kind of why we played in the gaps more. The reason why I like switching the one through five is because it usually allows us to be way more aggressive. Um, and honestly, like, it worked for us against a lot of teams. We did struggle when we did it against Earlham last, last year. So, you know, like, we get to play them again. That might be a, a switch we make, and we'll see. But I thought your bigs actually did a pretty decent job of at least hedging that for a second mm -hmm. and not giving him a downhill lane right away. Yeah, and, and I'll give you uh, – uh, Jay Bright's a, a really good player, and she does a great job. Um, for them and, and she can she can create off the dribble she gets in the lane she keeps her dribble alive so we just had to do a better job at forcing her left and cutting her off but uh, yeah I agree and I think that's what Haley gives us Haley can guard like a guard and she's six foot one so um, she just got to get more comfortable and the, she's going to keep getting better and better and I thought Stivers did a good job too today I agree um, who's another freshman for us so. they both got really good touch in the mid range as well they can score it from a couple different angles yep. like they're, they're both got a chance to be really good players for you yep and they're from the same, same AAU program too so they've been playing together for years so they have that connection which helps the last thing I want to ask you before I let you go Morgan Jenkins went on a run in that second half where she won she went 10-0 yeah she had to dude she had to and she'll tell you that um she struggled I mean it's no secret you can look at the stat sheet I don't we, shooting 18 percent from three coming into the game we we joke around and we say like she's got to hit one here soon but it was getting to where it was like I think she had missed her last like 25 in a row um, but and and the thing is with Morgan is she's still going to compete defensively, so yeah. you leave her on the floor, and when she gets going and see she she sees it going down, like she could be a kid that can run off twenty five on you quickly. That so we just stuck with she her. She had seven until midway through the third quarter and ends with seventeen. Yeah, and she and she's our best assist kid. And I told her create for other people and then your shot will come. And she did that and she buys in. Um, yeah, I'm proud of her. She's I mean, a stat sheet stuffer. I mean, okay. she had at one point she had seven point six rebounds four assists and five steals and then ends up with 17. Yeah. That's a kid you got to leave on the floor. You do. And I, and I don't want to play at 32 minutes, but at the same time, like, you have to get her to see it going because otherwise it's going to roll into the next game and the next game. So super proud of her. Her team were all behind her. And, but she works hard every day, and she's a great kid. You could see Mills love talking about her in the, in the post-game interviews. So I know those two are really tight, but it was really good to see Morgan have a good offensive game. For sure. They all, they, they all buy in. They all support each other. That's the best part about our program. Um, from the, the starters all the way through. Um, they, they really do get on and support each other, so it's fun. Coach, thank you for taking a couple time, couple minutes with us. Yep. Good luck on Wednesday night. Thank you so much. So we had a foul. Matthew Manager goes to the line. Um, he makes the first. Lions lead 23-11 to 11 here. Uh, that foul was on Mike Williams, his third. That's big for Earlham. Their 6'10 center will sit the rest of the first half. Manager makes the second. Josh Patel will check in. Get Willard Cluxton a break. Now that they got Manager healthy, Lavender playing the way he's been. Coach Kerrigan has a pretty good rotation here. Kratzer has checked in for the first time. 
he's able to go eight, nine deep right now. Um, for a while there, he was only able to play seven guys with Matt out. So this is this is good for Coach. Bateg picking up Walker. This is Rhodes being guarded by Hammonds. Gets it off to Bodie, who is into the game for the first time for Earlham. Bodie around a screen from Anda. This is Kennedy. Gets it back to Anda. Anda is going to get a foul, I believe, on Lavender. Yeah, that, go, that goes against Jason Lavender. That is Lavender's second. So Kohler will check back in for Lavender. Lions now with Bate, Hammonds, Kratzer, Menninger, and Kohler on the floor. For Earlham, it is Bodie, Anda, Walker, Rhodes, and Kennedy. This is Rhodes being guarded by Hammonds. Anda gets it off to Walker, trying to find Rhodes in the post. Earlham continues to work it quickly around the outside. Bodie pulls up from the mid-range, misses long. Bate comes down with the board. We are under eight minutes here to play. At the next whistle, we'll have our next media timeout. Bate gets in a little bit of a tough spot, has to pick it up against Walker. Kohler, they're looking to play through Kratzer here. Around a screen from Hammonds is Bate. Tay with a little bit of a push, got away with it. Kratzer with a slip, goes to the rim, lays it up and in, and the foul. Nice take by Nate Kratzer. Great pass. From I believe that was Hammonds with the pass. The foul goes against number 13, Loki Anda. And we will go to our under 10 or under eight media timeout. Lions lead by 15 here early. Um, we will be right back on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. All right, entering for Earlham, number five, Bobby, Bobby Wanell, six-foot sophomore guard from Indianapolis, Indiana. As Nate Kratzer will go to the line to try to finish off this old-school three-point play. Kratzer, eight for 12 on the season from the free-throw line, 67% free-throw shooter. Misses it short. Manager had a shot at the board. But Wanell comes up with it for Earlham. Walker continues to handle the point guard duties for Earlham. Working against Bate. Wanell rips baseline, being guarded by Menninger. This is Onda. Onda dribble handoff with Walker. Walker goes in, right hand. Bailout call there. Kratzer was straight up and down. Got there a little late, but. So 10 will go to the free throw line. Will Walker. Walker is a 89% free throw shooter on the year. This freshman is really tough for Earlham. Rims out, though. Announcer's jinx. As Collinsworth checks back in for Kratzer. Very impressed with the way Ken Walker handles himself. 
handling the point guard duties for this Earlham Quaker team. Rims in the second one. It didn't go down clean, but it went down. Pate will bring it up for the Lions. Off to Menninger. Hammonds, top of the key. Hammonds rips, goes, lays it up with the right hand. Unable to get it to go, but is able to get his rebound. Menninger thought about a catch and shoot three. Gets it to Collinsworth, high post. Hands it off to Kohler. Kohler considers it. He will shoot from three. Bang! Jack Kohler with the big three. Lions first three of the ball game. All that more impressive is the what they're doing. Haven't only made a single three. This is Onda. It's a Walker. Walker trying to get downhill on Bate. Kicks it over to Wanell, who gets it to Rhodes. Rhodes back to Onda. Walker stops, pops, drills the three. Bate got hit in the side of the knee. Pate will be checked out at the next whistle by Willard Cluxton. Pate around a screen from Collinsworth. Back to Luke at the top of the key. Dribble handoff with Pate. Pate trying to go to the rim. Loses it out of bounds. The ball is going to stay with the Lions, I believe. Coach Joe Shewers is not happy with that call. Cluxton will inbound. Left side of your screen, underneath the basket. Gets it into Hammonds, Hammonds catches, tries to lay it up, is unable to get it to go. Little bit off balance. Earlham comes the other way. Looking to cut the Lions lead to 12 or 11 with a three. Walker gets it off to Wanell. Wanell with the head fake. Dribble drives and wisely pulls it back out. This is Kennedy. Onda Walker pulls from deep, misses long. Another rebound from Dylan Hammonds. Give him four boards in the ball game. After a 15 rebound effort the other night. Lions play it over the top to Collinsworth. Collinsworth against Rhodes, lays it up and in. Good play by Collinsworth. They keep fronting him without Williams. They are going to pass it over the top almost every time. Walker around the screen, gets it off to Rhodes. Rhodes working on Hammonds. Walker getting downhill. Kennedy stops, pops from the mid-range. Give Hammonds another board. Gives him five for the game. Collinsworth to Cluxton, rolls it into Hammonds. Hammonds working on Onda, tries to go to that right hand, misses Kohler from straight away. Bang, Jack Kohler from three. Lions extend their lead to 19 points, holding Earl to just 15 so far in the first half. 10 of which have come from Walker. Wanell tries to get it to Walker, kicks out of bounds for a turnover. A pair of subs for Earlham as Conno Trenton Connolly checks in and Jeffrey Nunnally checks back in. Wanell and Kennedy will take a seat. Back in for the Lions is Jason Lavender as Matthew Manager takes a seat. Cluxton will bring it across. Gets it off to Lavender. Lavender around a pair of screens. Had an opportunity to get to the rim and misses it with the right-handed layup. Nice defense there by Connolly. Walker turns it over again and then tries to knock it away. Hits Jack Kohler. No foul called. Coach Shewers wanted a foul on that drive. Lavender has it around another couple of screens. Kohler comes around another couple of screens. Bang! Jack Kohler! Three for three. From deep, Kohler with now 11 in the ball game. Rhodes gets it off to Nunnally. Nunnally around a screen from Anda to Walker. This is Connolly, gets it to Walker in the post, working on Cluxton. Kicks it to Rhodes. Rhodes right to left crossover on Hammonds. 
Goes back to that right shoulder. Nice slow play in the post there from Jackson Rhodes. Lions lead by 20. Under 3, 15 to play here in the first half. Collinsworth has it. Right elbow extended. Tries to go to the dribble handoff with Lavender. Unable to get it. Kohler fakes the three. Now being guarded by Walker. Lions go to their five up offense. Collinsworth will roll in here and he is held. Rhodes held him on the cut. Lions not shooting here yet, but we will have our under four minute media timeout. We'll be right back on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. All right, my apologies as we went to break. I said we would not be shooting. Lions are actually in the double bonus. Um, so that means that Collinsworth will shoot a pair here. Luke with 14 points here in the first half. Go along with five rebounds. Two of three from the free throw line before these two attempts. Collinsworth playing really well of late. Makes the first. At halftime, we'll be able to watch a preview of the Lions cheer and dance team's national routine here on the live stream. They will be performing at halftime in this ballgame. Luke rims out the second one. Lavender had the rebound, had it taken away from him by Connolly. Nunnally will bring it across for Earlham. Around a screen from Onda. Gets it to Walker. Looks like they're moving Walker off the ball a little bit. Cluxton knocks it away, and it goes off of Walker back to the Lions. Good defensive play by Willard Cluxton. Willard will bring it up. Lions have Cluxton, Menninger, Kohler, Collinsworth, and Lavender on the floor. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock. Big Luke dribbles it over, gets it to Willard. Good job of rolling Luke into the paint. Right-handed hook shot, misses. We're going to have a foul on Matthew Menninger on the rebound attempt. As Onda grabbed it, Menninger kind of got a hold of one of his arms. Earlham inbounds. Trailing by 21, shooting just 29% from the field for the game. Rhodes has it to on the top of the key. Nunnally kicks it to Connolly. Connolly bangs in the three. I apologize, no, that is Connolly. I thought it was 1L for a second. My apologies, it is Connolly. Walker goes for the steal in the open court. Cluxon does a good job of avoiding it. Rejects the screen from Luke. Luke has it top of the key. Dribbles around. Cluxton will shoot the three. Misses long. Manager had a shot at the board, but Connolly comes down with it for Earlham. Walker. Round a screen from Onda. Misses the runner. 
Lions come down with another board. Lions out rebounding the Quakers right now, 22-11. Cluxton, left-hand dribble, trying to get the Lions into their offense. He's, he's fouled, but it's not called. Nice pass from Willard to Manager. Manager with the right-handed floater, bangs it in. Nice play there by Willard and Matthew Manager. Under a minute to play here in the first. Lions lead by 20. This is Connolly. Gets it to Anda. Anda to Walker. Walker stops. Pops from that mid-range. He likes that shot. Great box out by Willard or by Luke. Great box out. That ball bounced on the floor three or four times based on the box out by Luke. He ends up getting fouled on the rebound attempt. That's Anda. His second, team's 11th. Luke will have a pair here with 42 seconds to play in the first half. Makes the first. Give him 16. Makes the second. Give him 17. Walker bringing the ball up the floor for Earlham. Around a screen. Nunnally rips to go baseline. Lions do a great job of cutting it off. Menninger cuts it off. Lavender blocks it. Nunnally gets a foul on the rebound. We'll have a reset. I think they called it a kick. Timeout, Mount St. Joseph. 30-second timeout. Shot clock is off. We have 29.3 to play here in the first half. Lions lead by 22 here on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. Out of the timeout, the Lions will inbound the ball right side of your screen. Continues to be manager, Cluxton, Lavender, Kohler, and Collinsworth out there for the Lions. Walker, Anda, Kennedy, Rhodes, and Connolly for Earlham. Willard is going to be comfortable dribbling this until it gets down a little bit. Go to a high ball screen with Luke. Gets it back to the big fella. The big fella crab dribbles. Nice backdoor cut for Menninger. Tries to find Kohler in the corner. Unable to, but comes down with the rebound himself and lays it up and in. Lions will carry a 14, a 24-point advantage into the halftime break. So we'll be back at, after this halftime break here on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network.
All right, once again, we are back here with the second half of action. Lions lead 44-20. They will start with the ball here in the second half. On the floor for the Lions is the starting five of Hammonds, Cluxton, Kohler, Lavender, and Collinsworth. Erland goes with Walker, Rhodes, Nunnally, Kennedy, and Anda. Continue to look for Luke. Luke working on Rhodes. Nice up and under left-handed lay-in by Luke Collinsworth to get the second half started. Anda to the rim, kicks it back out. Was cut off well there by Collinsworth. Walker around a screen from Rhodes, gets it in, being guarded by Hammonds. Looks outside for Nunnally. Nunnally tries to go to the paint. Anda catches rips. Trying to take Collinsworth to the paint. Kennedy to Anda, Anda out to Walker. Just four seconds on the shot clock. Walker pulls, misses off the right side. Kohler down with the rebound. Good first defensive possession for the Lions. Force Erlen to use the entire shot clock and still come up empty. Collinsworth on the left block. Goes over that right shoulder, lays it up, misses, but is fouled by Lucky Anda. Collinsworth will go to the line to shoot a pair. His next point will give him 20 for the ball game. Average is just over 20 a game coming in. Misses the front. Collinsworth now five of eight from the free throw line. Rolls off the second as well. Maybe I announce her jinx Luke as well. Nunnally, nice pass down to the paint to Kennedy. Kennedy gets off to Onda. Onda with a left-handed pull up, misses it. Dylan Hammonds comes down with his sixth rebound of the ball game. Narrowly missed the double-double the other night. Just a point short, Collinsworth. Earlham not doubling yet. Nice roll off of it. Collinsworth has 21. Coach Shooters of Earlham asking for a timeout. That'll stretch to immediate timeout as the first floating timeout of the second half. We'll be right back on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network.
statistical rundown, counting what we played so far in the second half. Lines 18 of 30, 60% from the field. Just three of five from three. Don't have to do many, make many threes when you're shooting 60% from the field. Also out rebounding Earlham 24 to 13 at this point. Walker takes Cluxton to the front of the rim. Foul call. From the official outside the paint. Hearing it from the fans. Walker makes the first. Measures up and makes the second. Merlin will drop back and not press now. Trailing by 26. Walker picks up Cluxton three-quarter court. Hammonds gets it off to Collinsworth. Hammonds, good duck in, right-handed put up, bangs it in. Give the young freshman 10. Erlen comes the other way. Rhodes off to Walker. Walker to Nunnally. Cut off by Kohler. Walker around a screen from Rhodes. Clawson does a good job of recover. Anda gets it off to Kennedy. To Rhodes. This is Nunnally. Line switch as Hammonds picks him up. Nice little mid-range jump, jump shot there by Joffrey Nunnally. That's his first bucket of the ball game. This is Lavender, left elbow. Nice high-low pass from Hammonds to Collinsworth. Again, they continue to front him in the post. And the Lions are doing a great job of throwing it over the top. Coach Kerrigan upset with the defensive effort as Walker goes and lays it in and gets fouled by Willard Cluxton. It'll be Cluxton second. Checking in for Earlham is number 22, Aiden Temple, as Anda takes a seat. Walker makes the second. Give him 15. Tries to, tries to take it away from Cluxton. Cluxton does a good job. There's a foul called on Walker. It's his first. Team's second here in the second half. Exactly 17 minutes to play. Ryan's inbound. Cluxton has it knocked away a little bit. This is Lavender. Lavender goes to the jump stop. Gets it off to Kohler. Luke, top of the key, Jack, catch, shoot. Bang! Jack Kohler for three. Still the only line to hit a three in this ballgame. But he is four for four from deep. Give him 14 points in the ballgame. Kennedy lines now sucking into a little bit of a zone. You don't see a lot out of that, a lot out of Coach Kerrigan teams. Temple kicks it back out to Walker. Walker off the front of the rim. Hammonds comes down with his seventh board of the ball game. Hammonds to Lavender. They continue to front. Does Temple? Collinsworth catches it on the block. Cross court to Kohler. Bang! Jack Kohler. Five for five from deep. 17 points for the fifth year senior. This is Kennedy, has his three rim out. Hammonds, his eighth rebound of the ball game. Two boards away from a double-double is the freshman. Collinsworth on the block. They finally double, he tries to find Lavender. Ill-advised pass, Walker goes all the way to the front of the rim, lays it up and in. Willard was doing everything he could to not foul there. Nice play there by Walker in the open floor. Cluxton gets it 
back from Collinsworth. Does a good job to maintain the dribble, gets it to Hammonds. Hammonds to Collinsworth. To Lavender. Lavender to the middle of the floor. Takes Kennedy all the way to the rim, lays it up and in. Great shot by Jason Lavender. After his 24 point effort the other night, that's his first buck of the ball game, but he's played pretty well. Not only catches and shoots in the mid range, Coach Kerrigan is very upset. He will send Matthew, Matthew Manager to check in. Because that was a wide open look for Earlham. 29 point game here. Kohler again. Heat check. My goodness, Jack Kohler, are you kidding me? Six three pointers for Jack Kohler. Nunnally comes back and answers with one of his own. Kerrigan is not happy with his transition defense the last two possessions. A couple of wide open shots from Joffrey Nunnally. Lavender in the post being guarded by Kennedy. Lavender a little bigger than Kennedy. Not a great shot there from Jason. Walker trying to get downhill on Willard. Stops and pops, hits a floater right in front of Collinsworth. I believe Josh Pate is now in street clothes. So it's not like we can go to him to try to defend Walker. Kohler to Collinsworth, who will shoot the three himself. Bang! Luke Collinsworth for three. Give the big fella 26. Trying to win that HCAC Player of the Week award. Averaging 27 points a game right now with still 13 to play here in the Harrington Center. Walker with the two. Misses it. Hammonds, ninth rebound of the ball game. One more for a double-double for the young fella. Nice pass into Luke. Oh, Luke was wide open if he goes quick. Rolls around, lays it up, misses. Goes up for the board. Going to get a bailout foul on the rebound attempt. We have our media, first media timeout at 13 minutes to play here in the second half. This is the under-16 media timeout. So we'll be right back from the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. We're back here for the action as Coach Jalen Goodwin, the assistant coach for the Lions, barking out defensive assignments to his players. This is Walker. Walker with 19. Nunnally. Gets it off to Temple. Temple. Lines up in Walker's hands. Temple from straight away. Bangs it in. Nice shot from Aiden Temple. 6'6 freshman from Johns Creek, Georgia. Buxton picked it up in a tough spot there, but does get it off to Manager. Manager checked in at the last break. Kohler thinks about a heat check three. Collinsworth does too. Dribble hand off to Cluxton. Back to Collinsworth. Cluxton from straightaway. 
Bang! Willard Cluxton for three. Willard over these last two games now shooting 50% from three. Walker in the mid-range. Goes to the runner against Collinsworth. It rims out. Not a great shot from Walker. Cluxton. We'll have a block on Connolly. He was in the circle. Cluxton took a hard hit there. I think he was trying to find Menninger in this short corner. Be a tough injury for the Lions to overcome here. We have our under 12 minute media timeout. We'll give you an update on Willard when we come back. He's a tough young man. I doubt he will be coming out of this ball game. We'll be right back on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. All right, we'll come back a little early from this time out as I'm happy to be joined again for this second half of action by my good friend Chuck Murray. Chuck, we talked a little bit off air, man. This Lions team looks really good right now, don't they? Uh, you know, it's probably an overreaction because it's it's we're in the moment, but, man, the three-point shooting, it's unbelievable. We got, I mean, I haven't looked at the stats, but it seems like we're hardly missing. Eight of ten from three. It helps when Jack goes six of six. Yeah, he's on fire, and I always felt like – when he decided to come back for his 50, I thought that was really a big boost for the Lions. And, boy, is he showing out today. He's been fantastic. Kohler has 20 points. Again, perfect from the field. 7 of 7 from the field. 6 of 6 from 3. Luke has 26. 10 of 17. He's hit 1 of 1 from 3. Luke, over the last two games, right now with 11 minutes to play, is averaging 27 points a game over the last two. Yeah, I'm a little shocked. They finally started doubling him. But other than that, he's been singled up, and I was just I was shocked. Willard, he took a nice little shot there. Knocked the wind at him a little bit, but he's going to get two shots here. As I said when I went to break, Willard is a very tough young man. I was going to be very shocked if he wasn't out there when he came out. Yeah, he, he's really done a good job. Really done a good job because he plays the majority of minutes, handles the ball, you know, 99% of the time. Especially with now Bate out in street clothes over there. Right. Willard makes the second, pushes the lead to 31. Walker yeah. brings it up. Yeah, he's a very impressive young man, number 10, Walker. Yeah, he's a freshman. He's, he has 19. Yeah, he's good. He's really good. This is Nunnally. Gets it to Walker. Walker takes Willard baseline, pushes off yeah. a little bit, steps back. Nice yeah. little shot. I talked about this earlier. I love when a point guard will shoot from the mid-range. Yeah, he, he's very, very impressive. Might have got away with a little shove off there, but he's very impressive. Hammonds has it, gets it to Collinsworth. The manager, Hammonds, does a good job of slipping it. And he's fouled by Walker. Almost gets the ball to go. Dylan's quietly had a really, really good game. He, again, I think we mentioned this earlier. He rebounds the ball so well. Somehow I missed it. I've been giving an update on his double-double watch, <laughs> and he picked up his 10th board somewhere. Yeah. And, and now has 10 boards, 10, assist, or 10 points. Okay. So a double-double for the freshman. He's always Amazing. around that ball on a rebound. <laughs> Checking in for Earlham is number two, McCaden Bodie. First time he's been out here in the second half, played a little bit in the first. Yeah. Dylan Hammonds, a prolific high school player at Grand County High School. Yeah, he's, he's been very impressive in his freshman year. He can use both hands around the basket, can shoot it a little bit, and clearly he's a great rebounder. I think he's a better shooter than he's even shown from what Coach Kerrigan tells me. This is Walker trying to take Willard into the paint. Temple with the straightaway three. Collinsworth picks up the board, his seventh. Yeah, it's, it's cl clearly the Lions' day. They played really, really well. Kohler almost steps out of bounds. Being guarded by Nunnally. Collinsworth has it, top of the key. Kohler thinks about a heat check three. Collinsworth will shoot it. Bang! Big Luke Collinsworth! Give him 29. I think we could shoot blindfold and that would go in. We're that's just the, really playing well. That's the way it was against us for a while as Nunnally takes the deep three, misses. Collinsworth gets his eighth rebound of the ball game. So now Luke is on a bit of a double-double watch. 29.7 boards, eight boards for the big Luke. Hammonds has it in the post. 
Being guarded by Connolly. Back out to Collinsworth. Heat check. Almost banks it in. Yeah, I don't think he tried to do that. Coach Kerrigan yelling at him to throw it back into the post in that spot. Nunnally around a screen from Temple. This is Bodie from, from the left elbow. Misses Kohler with the board. Hey, Coach Kerrigan, excuse me, we were talking earlier in the week about last year how they went to Earlham and won, but they came down here and they, they gave it to us pretty good. And uh, he was very worried about this game. They're very athletic and it's just our day. Nice pass from Willard. Matthew Menninger misses a three. That's where those <laughs> legs that haven't played in a game in a couple weeks. Yeah, I thought that was going to go in because everything else has been going in. Checking in for the Lions are Nate Kratzer and Jason Lavender. Lavender. I wanted to say Loveland. <laughs> I don't know why I drew a blank. I've been calling his name a bunch lately. I'd like to see Nate Kratzer get going a little bit. I think he's a very, very good player, but he's, you know, he was injured at the beginning of the year, and he's still probably trying to get into game shape. And Luke plays so well. And I know coaches played them both together at times, which I like that. So hopefully he can get, a, get going here a little bit. Can cause a matchup problem when we can play them both together. Right. they got to be able to guard the opposing players. Walker, great defense by Collins, or Cluxton. Man manager good with block. the block. Matthew Manager can flat out defend. Hammonds and all the way to the rim, wow. misses it, <laughs> goes down hard. Yep. Almost had another and one for the freshman. Yeah, and I mentioned earlier, you know, Dylan can use both hands yep. very effective, especially around the basket. So, again, that's what makes him so special, too. So, looking forward to another three years with him after this. He did a really good job of kind of slowing it down on the break and, and putting himself in a position to get fouled. Yeah, he got under control there a little bit. You can tell he plays like the son of a coach. Hammonds makes the first. The Lions are on their way to 100 points here potentially. Dylan just a 62% free throw shooter coming in. I think he struggled a little bit early in the year. Again, a little nerves maybe college, but now he's really settled in. He is now 5 of 5 or 6 of 6 in this game as soon as the stats update. And the Lions have been playing well. I think they're starting to figure out who they are, Coach. Yep, yep. Walker. Once again from the mid-range this time, it rims out. Hammonds comes down with his 11th rebound of the game. Well, he's going to end up around 15 probably. You know, we talked, they played such a very difficult non-conference schedule, and now this gives them a chance to be 4-2 in the league. And once again, I always have to tell, remind Toby how young his team is. Great pass. Great backdoor <laughs> cut from Matt. Great find from Kratzer. Yeah. Lions almost doubling up the Earlham Quakers. Walker. Gets himself in a tough spot. Bailout, yep. foul call. Gets it to go to. Yeah, he's, he's very impressive. Very, very impressive. You got to try to make him go left if you can, but again, easier said than done. The foul goes on Kratzer, his third. Walker with 23 in the game. Again, had 26 the other night against Transy. Give him 24. Yeah, he's looking like he might be freshman of the year. Or they call it newcomer of the year now. Newcomer, what, yeah. yeah. I kind of like freshman of the year. I, I get with all the transfers and everything, but that true freshman, to me, I like that better. Either way, he's going to be right there. I like first-year player. Because if it's a kid who went somewhere and didn't play, Kratzer nice was a nice up Kratzer. and under. Yep. Great job to not move that pivot. Yep. I'd like to get him going. And we'll check in at the next break for Earlham. So will Kennedy. Good double there by Hammonds. Gets it out of Walker's hands. Connolly to Nunnally. Nunnally all the way to the rim. Lays it up. Misses. Oh, a little bit of an out-of-control foul there. Media timeout coming up. We'll see who the foul's on before we... The foul goes against Dylan Hammonds. We'll be right back from Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. Thank you. 
All right, so Erlin will have the ball inbounding under the left basket as you look at the screen. Trailing here by almost 40. Yeah, I, I would have never believed it. Correct. Like we're it's, playing great. And they're playing really well on this end is the, the yeah, big thing. Are. Kennedy gets it off to Bodie, who checked in at the last break. That's Onda to Kennedy to Walker. Walker stops, pops, and makes a three. Young man can flat out play this game. He, he really can. He's, they got a good one there. Really good one. Three more years of that we got to worry about, plus up at Earlham this year. So. Give the young man 27. Yeah, he's, he's really good. Kratzer to the rim. Nice block oh, there yeah. by Anda. Yeah. yeah. I like the aggressiveness that he took into the hole hard. Coach Kerrigan asking him to head fake there. The thing you got to love about Coach Kerrigan, it could be a one-point game or a 30-point game. He's going to be intense. He's going to coach his butt off. Lavender has it on the handoff from manager. Considers the shot. Wisely does not take. He's going to have to take one here. Yep. Got to shoot it. Step back three. Rim. Pulled down by Kennedy for Earlham. They will quickly go the other way. Connolly with the head fake. Lavender with the poke out. Must have got him because he's not complaining. That's a call that's, even if you don't get him, it's pretty ha yeah, often made. Yeah. So that's his second, team sixth. Yeah, there's a myth that the hand is, is part of the ball, and it's not. No. If you hit the hand, it's a foul. Or at least it's supposed to be called. That. Correct. Whether it is or not, that's. We have an offensive foul. Position. I think it's on Anda. Yeah, 13. Yeah. He was moving on that screen. Well, you know, fun, it's funny. We talked in the women's game how I said there's a lot of illegal screens more in the women's, but we've seen a few here to do in the men's game. Correct. I'm always worried about that with the way we run our offense. It's pass and cut, and they yep. often cut into people that could be called a moving screen, yep. but the intent is in the screen. Hammonds with the head fake, finds Cluxton from the corner. Two-point shot. Kratzer came down with the board. They're going to get a foul yep. on Connolly. Yep. I was waiting for the official to put his arms up over there. Yep. Good offensive rebound there by Nate. It's his second foul as Bobby Winnell checks back in for Earlham. Looks like Mylon Kennedy's going to take a seat. Coach Shewer's also doing a good job of continuing to coach his team. Yep, he is. Trying to use this as a learning experience for his young men. As Kratzer makes the front end of the, the, the one and one. Yeah, you know, like you say, always a learning. There's still 646, a, a chance to get better, improve, and correct mistakes. So you keep playing. I was going to say this earlier and got cut off for whatever reason, but I like, I like often in, in me and Coach Kerrigan's conversations as Kratzer makes the second. Got to remind him how young his team is. Yep, yep. I mean, Luke is in his second year playing college basketball. Manager second year. Lavender first. Hammonds first. Yeah, other than uh, Willard, Willard. And Kohler. And Kohler, yeah. That is 12 boards now for Dylan Hammonds. The only way he doesn't get to that 15 is if Coach empties the bench a little earlier than he usually right. does. Kratzer oh, is going to be a charge. Yeah. Yeah. Close. He was a little outside that line. That's one of those ones where you'd like to see Nate go straight up and yeah, down and shoot that yeah, thing. Yeah, you like the aggressiveness, but he's got four fouls. You know, he's getting his money's worth, that's for sure. But I, I like the, the fact he's getting some extended minutes and getting a chance to get out there and play. I know they're going to they're going to need him in some type of role down the stretch, whether it's a lot of minutes or spelling Luke or whatever. They're going to need him. You go play a, a Hanover or Rose Holman. They've got multiple bigs, yep. Transy as well. Juanel gets it off to Anda. This is a shot here from Bodie. Long. There you go. Hammonds. Another rebound. 13 boards. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, if he stays in, he's going to get it. Lavender pulls. Misses everything. Yeah. That's the kind of shot that will be Coach Kerrigan yeah. to take you out. Earlham has the ball back. This is Walker. And it's 27 points. Gets Crasher in the air, turns around, lays it up and in. It's a yeah. really good play by Walker. Yeah, he's a tough, tough guy to guard. Tough guy to guard. Especially for someone like Nate. I yep. Mean, yep. 
He just moves so much better. This is Menninger, left-hand dribble. Gets it to Lavender. Kratzer at the elbow. Lavender around a screen from Kratzer. Hammonds back to Lavender. Another screen from Kratzer. Menninger to Cluxton to Hammonds. Ooh, rimmed out for the young fella. Good look at a three, though, for yep, the Lions. Yep. Good offense. Walker, nice pass oh, off. Walked. Yeah, it's a travel. Yeah. It was not called. Give the bucket to Trenton Connolly, the freshman from Merritt Island, Florida. You know, one thing about the Lions, they're very, very unselfish. They'll make the extra pass. And, uh, you know, again, that's shown today. And they've got the ball in the hot hand, whether it be Luke or Jack. So they recognize those things. There's going to be a foul on Walker. Yeah, he, he's been extremely aggressive out front guarding Will or not. I was a little shocked they haven't called it a little bit tighter. But again, you play, you know, the way the, the game's officiated. If they're going to let you get physical out there, you, you keep getting physical. It's a little surprising that he only has three, being the primary guarder of the ball handler. Right. Reiner Smart checks in for the Lions. Well, he's not going to get his 15, but he had a heck of a game. Heck of a game by Dylan. Dylan Hammonds leaves the game. 14 points, 13 rebounds, a pair of assists. Heck of a ball game, six of six from the free throw line. Willard makes the front, or makes the second, my apologies. No, that is the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. That, that sub in the men's game always trips me up. In the women's, it has to come after the second free throw. Right. Willard makes the second. Now, I always thought they would want him after the first one so they couldn't set up or right. stall with a, a sub. Yep. Connolly. Tried to hand it off to Wanell. Eventually he does get to the hands of Wanell. He goes to the rim. Kratzer comes down with the board. Cluxton to Smart. Smart lays it up with the left hand. Young fellow just entered the game. Freshman. Yeah, he was kind of unaware where he was at on the floor. Bodie almost falls down. Connolly gets it to Anda. This is Anda in the post being guarded by Kratzer. To Bodie at the top of the key. Spin move, off to Walker. Walker around a screen. Bodie gonna pull an unorthodox three. Knocked away, give Tanner Smart his first rebound. Yeah, you know, uh, Willard's gonna sleep well tonight. You know, handling the ball 95 for trying to uh, chase Walker all over the court. Kratzer, there's that head yeah, fake coach wanted go. earlier. Yep, nice job by Nate. Good entry pass. Again, sharing the ball, finding the open guy. Walker goes to the rim, lays it up and in. That'll be a foul on Cluxton. Should be the last media timeout, I believe. And we will have our under four-minute media timeout. We'll be right back from the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network. All right, we're back here as we're getting ready to go into the final 339 of this game. The Lions, Coach Kerrigan has went to his reserve unit, checking in number one, Braden Miller, number 40, Brandon Dangerfield, number 14, Justice Channels, to go along with Manager and Smart, who were already on the floor. Um, good to see Coach Kerrigan do that early and get these guys some extended run. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's nice, uh, you know, Matt Menger being back now because he was injured for a while there. I talked about that a little bit in the first half. Now, obviously, Josh is in street clothes, but right. having an eight, nine-person rotation yeah. is a lot different than the seven, seven he could play a week ago. Yep. Got a little bit of options there. I mean, the, the, the arrival of Lavender showing what he's capable of. Obviously, we all thought Dylan Hammonds could do this kind of thing. Um, but it's definitely lengthened the bench a little bit for Coach Kerrigan. I think Coach Kerrigan's one of them guys, he probably wouldn't say it, but in, in October he would have said, like, we're going to be a different team in January than yep. we are in October, November. And that's 
proven to be the case. A lot of the times it's that way with his teams because some of the stuff that we run offensively is very difficult. And those young guys got to pick it up or they can't get out there. As Walker yeah. goes to 31 in the ball game now. He will take a seat probably for the final yeah, time. Yeah, that young man deserves an ovation. He played his butt off. He played fantastic. Freshman Donovan Pruitt checks in from Indianapolis. This is Braden Miller. Gets it off to Channels. Tries to go with the tough pass into Miller. Unable to get it. A little bit out of control there yeah. from Pruitt. Gets Kinda bailed out. out. Yep, yep. Me and you speak the same language. <laughs> Out a foul go on Justice Channels, his first, team's ninth. So after this one, Erlen will shoot the double bonus the rest of the way. Makes the first. Coach Kerrigan has to be really pleased, you know, at, at the game and the effort today. And, the, you know, the shooting has been outstanding. And he's got to feel like, hey, we, got, we can make a little run here. Got another sub. Alex Willett to check into the game as Matthew Manager will take a seat for the final time. This is great to get guys in. Like, you know, when our football games, we get up yep. big. It's nice to get guys in and get them some experience and playing time. They work hard in practice. You know, they deserve the opportunities when, the, when it presents itself. Braden Miller gets it. Gets it to Justice Channels. Gets away with a little walk yeah. on his own. Yeah, I think the whistles may stay in the pocket here. This is Alex Willett, who just checked into the ballgame. Gets it into Miller. There you go. Shoot. Miller can really shoot. Right. Willett from the corner, short. Rebound by Bodie from Earlham. No fouls. Brandon Dangerfield gets away with a little bit of an open court foul. This is Connolly. Misses Long. Smart gets aboard. Dangerfield brings it up for the Lions to Smart. To Willett. Willett with a nice entry pass to Miller. Miller with the right hand put up, misses it. Just a little short. Decent little look for yep. Miller, though. i tell you what, the kid works his tail off. I see him in the gym shooting almost every single day. Yeah, he, he was in here between uh, before the women's game shooting. His layup is missed. Temple goes for the, re, the tip in, misses, but Dangerfield comes away with the board and goes the other way. Miller to Willett. Willett to Dangerfield. Lions will reset it. Missed the bank attempt, does Dangerfield. Mm -hmm. They have a foul here on Justice Channels. My apologies, that last shot was Justice Channels. Yeah, you know, you get a little, you get in the game, you get a little anxious, you want to make something happen, and then you commit a silly foul, especially with a big lead. But uh, you know, if you're going to commit them, I guess now's the time. Misses the first. Yeah. Erlen will have another player check in. It's Marcos Paul, sophomore forward from Miramar, Florida. Well, he looks like he could play tight end. Big, strong-looking kid. Erlen doesn't play football anymore, I know Chuck. they don't, but maybe they'll start it back up. Makes a second. <laughs> this is Dangerfield. To Miller. Does a good job of picking that back up. Gets away with a double, double dribble. dribble. <laughs> yeah, yep. Dangerfield goes to the goes to the Euro step, lays it up and in, and one. Nice play by Dangerfield. Yeah, it really was. I thought for a while there we, should, we might have a shot at 100, but we're going to hit 90, I think. Might be right here. Yep. Dangerfield goes to the line with an opportunity to give the Lions 90. Doesn't. Nope. Smart had the rebound. Knocked out of his hands, so he'll get credit for the board. Yep. As number 33, Carson Crozier checks in for the first time. It, it, sophomore out of Felicity, Ohio. It makes it tough when you got, you know, a lot of guys on the bench and trying to get them all in, but unfortunately then they only get a minute or two to yep. get somebody else in. But I'm sure they're happy to get in the ball game and try to contribute. As Messiah Be Bebley checks in for Earlham, a 6'4 freshman from Kokomo, Indiana. Tanner Smart. Dangerfield around a screen from Smart. Has it taken away from him. Smart on the floor. Nice to see nice these job. backup guys yep. hustling their tails off. Channels gets it to Smart. Smart with the nice backdoor pass to Channels. Lays it up with the left hand and good. Nice. Get the lines 91 as a team. Yep, they made that 90 mark. 
Oh, that was an illegal screen. They yep. called it. I didn't know if they would at this point, but that was pretty pretty blatant. That file going Messiah Bebley. We have another check in for the line as Dale Bush will get his first action. Tanner Smart will take a seat. And for Earlham, it's Jordan Stoll, the 6'4 senior from Richmond, Indiana. This is Willett with the ball now. Willett to Bush. Bush shoots it and misses. Nice rebound there by Justice Channels. Yeah. Gets it off to Dangerfield. Dangerfield thinking about a three. Does a great job of getting to the rim. Lays it up and in. Give Dangerfield another bucket. Very nice. Very nice drive to the bucket. Drove in there hard and went to the strong hand and laid it in. Once again, tune in, in the, after this game. We'll try to bring you some post-game interviews. I believe we're going to have Dylan Hammonds and Jack Kohler joining us. Two good choices. I mean, Luke had a great game too, but we just a, lot of guys had, a lot of guys had great games Correct. today. Uh, free throw roll was out. 93-56, we are under 40, just at 40 seconds to play here in the ball game. This is Bush coming the other way. Gets it to channels. Gets away with the trail yeah. and a foul. Just let him go. No. They're not going to call it, but he gets it to go. Yeah, he Coach. looked at the referee like, where's my and one? And I think he had a point there. Now Coach is saying dribble it out, and Erlen's not going to contest it. So the mound on a little bit of a winning streak here, Blake. Great to see uh, the guys, all their work and hard effort, and uh, crowds giving them a standing ovation. So it's great to see. Yeah, fantastic effort by the Lions. In the end, the Lions win 93-58. Luke leads away with 29. Jack Kohler with 20, Dylan Hammonds with the double-double, 14 boards, 14 points, three rebounds, or 13 rebounds. Good, goodness gracious, I'm struggling. Um, well, you've called two games. I've called two <laughs> games. We'll be back with some interviews here in a few minutes. I'm going to try to get Dylan Hammonds and Jack Kohler to join us with interviews. Stay tuned for that. We'll be back on the Mount St. Joseph Sports Network.
All right, we are here post game with Lions fifth year senior guard Jack Kohler and freshman Dylan Hammonds. Guys, first off, congratulations on a big win. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good one. Jack, I got I gotta I gotta say it right now. Six for six from deep. When you decided to come back last year, you were dealing with that shoulder injury. I know early in the year you and I talked a little bit. The shot wasn't there. What does oh, a yeah. day like today feel like after all the work you put in to get here? You know, it just feels good um, coming out and all the work, uh, all the work that we put in, spare time, practices. Uh, it's it's nice when it pays off. Jack, is this what you envisioned when you came back? That type of night? Is that what you were hoping for? Oh, I was definitely hoping for it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Can't complain when that happens. But. Dylan, um, double double, man. Uh, you narrowly missed one the other night, missed yeah. missed that free throw to miss your double-double the other night. Could, should be coming in on back-to-back double-doubles. I mean, that rebounding, man, the, the way you rebound the basketball, 15 on Wednesday, 13 today. What What is it about rebounding the basketball? What is it about you that makes you a good rebounder? Uh, I I mean, I just like going up and getting the boards. But, I mean, I've, I've been able to read them when they come off the rim pretty good and know where they're going. So, it makes it a little easier when I know where the ball is going to go out and get it. As a freshman coming in, <laughs> You guys have a pretty young team. I was talking about this on the on the stream. Outside of you, Jack, and Willard, it's a really young team. Growing as a freshman into your role and figuring out how you can contribute as a first-year guy here, obviously we know how prolific your high school career was. Um, it's been a little different. You're not the, necessarily the focal point offensively. you got to get your buckets where they come. How have you found a role with this team? Oh, I've been at first it was it was a struggle just finding out where I needed to be in the offense and stuff and then finally me and coach was able to figure out where I needed to be and that's where I've been able to play better and be more productive throughout the whole game. You guys obviously you're you're kind of playing the four right now most of the mm -hmm. time next to Big Luke and uh, you know I talked about the other guys when they were up here the other day 29 point effort out of the big fella after 28 the other day when he's scoring it like that this is probably better question for you Jack. Um <laughs> How easy does it make your job when they're doubling him and it's causing chaos in the paint? All you got to do is catch and shoot. Oh, yeah. It's a million times easier. I love it. You know, Big Luke, he puts in a lot of work. So, uh, it's good to see that pay off, too. And it, it helps us with shooting, for sure. So, You guys also did a great job defensively tonight. Um, it's, it's crazy to think – that you just held them to 41 points and a guy had 31 or whatever they had. They end up with 40-something. What was the final? Um, 58. Okay, they ended up with 58 and they had a guy with 31. So you guys did a great job on everybody not named Ken Walker. Was that part of the the, the idea? You guys kind of knew he was going to get his and just kind of limit everybody else? Yep, you know, that's their guy. And uh, he, he's a volume scorer. I mean, he had, what, 31? Is that what you said? Yeah, 31, uh, 25, 25 shots. attempts. Yeah. I mean, 25 shots, that's uh, – I, I think we did a good job. Willard did a great job defending him. Uh, you know, it was a tough matchup. So, uh, he put in the work. Scout team helps us tremendously throughout the week, uh, having to guard those guys and having them get up in us and make us better every day. Final question, Jack. As you get a lead like that, what's it mean for the team, and especially you guys that play a ton when those – back end of the roster guys the scout team as you just called them get a chance to go out there and Brandon scores a couple buckets oh, yeah. and Dale Bush is jacking up threes yep. does, does that make you guys excited for them and it, it does it help in practice next week those kinds of things absolutely I mean we love it um, seeing everybody shoot and get in there and get theirs and you know it's it's really great to see guys congratulations on a fantastic game um, thank you be back at it on Wednesday get another home win in the conference yes sir